<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your patience. I know I'm late once again. It involved coffee and needing to procure it. Uh, mm -hmm. Welcome to the show, Jen Mazura. Thank you for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. And there's another uh, guest that's decided to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who's that? That's Cookie. That's so awesome. Oh, Pete, I hear a major, major echo delay now. You do? Okay. Only when we went live? Now you're muted. Do you have YouTube open by any chance or no? I have my 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 in ears in. But okay. Um uh, troubleshooting. I troubleshooting. Think it's better. Hang on. Okay. No. You don't have a, a YouTube open, right? Only StreamYard, right? I hang no, no, no. If I switch uh my input, it might hang go on. away. Wait, let me close down okay. all the windows hang on hang on i'm on it wait okay say test one two three test one two three. Oh, that's amazing okay problem that solved. whatever that was yes oh great okay so yeah, this is me cool. this is cookie this is my budgie cookie and for everybody who wants to be entertained follow cookie on instagram and tiktok that one is a bigger rock star than i am I, I hate the term rock star, but Cookie has like, I don't know how many million likes on TikTok and shit. <laughs> Is that right? Like a total uh, social media following Absolutely. of Cookie's right. own. That's awesome. He's the rock star. You, okay, just, so you know. just, just to segue right away, uh, I was watching some of your videos <laughs> yesterday and you <laughs> mentioned you feel the same way about artichokes that you do about TikTok like i don't understand TikTok or artichokes which i love well i i i kind of like moved on and well not moved on but i i kind of like dived into TikTok a little bit more so i don't understand it but cookie does so okay how do you use it cuz i don't understand it i mean i sort of understand it but i just like rail against it like an old man like i don't want to be involved but um tell me how what you found is it like is there a well, positive I, what I found is when I post a video of me playing guitar, I get like 400 clicks. If I post a video of him showering, he gets like 2 million clicks. So I'm like, <laughs> well, okay, I'm irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's that's how I learned TikTok. It's just about cookie. That's amazing. But I mean, that's I have, the thing I, have about... a, I, I do have a TikTok account, but I, it's, it's, it's nonsense, you know. But the cookie account is amazing. Cookie the Eagle. <laughs> okay i gotta check it out um the, yeah the amazing thing is that of course with the animals because i mean i'm i'm i gotta say i'm a little bit similar uh, instagram and what like it's all my whole feeds animals it's all dogs and cats and stuff now and just like you know and guitar i'll go like oh that's kind of interesting oh my god look at this cat you know it's just i don't know <laughs> it's universal we love animals you know we love pets and and uh it, so yeah it can uh it can be a uh a, a funny thing how social media yeah those little lessons you learn right like post a picture paul gilbert i mean he's got these crazy cats oh he's my god i love i love that cat yes yeah Absolutely. that he's and he's got more now he's got like more than one so i, I don't Fantastic. know if two or three but you know the, his his uh videos and photos with cats they get all the this whole guitar. pet thing is is a thing i mean i mean mike portnoy's dog mickey has <laughs> on instagram and courtney uh courtney cox used to have like a a, a cat called cheese le fromage and <laughs> she had a or he i don't know had an instagram as well so all these pets of all of us players are following each other <laughs> that's amazing i love it <laughs> i got to follow more of them myself well, you um, got to follow C cookie for sure Right, so cookie. when it, you know, you've got a healthy, yeah, so freaking cute. That's so awesome. <laughs> I'm so cookie, you want to say hi to the audience? Say hi. <laughs> I know it's bright. Oh no, it's too bright, right? Yeah, I know. I know. Sit here. Okay. Yeah, but what nope. are the cool, okay. crazy colors? Oh, bye, Cookie. See you later. Yeah. Oh, he'll come <laughs> back. <laughs> you were telling me, um, because I was, like I mentioned, I was watching some of your videos yesterday and I went down the rabbit hole of the uh, how to cook an artist. Tell the video. audience what you texted me last night when you watched those videos. Tell tell them what you found and what you watched. <laughs> because well, I thought you would watch like one of my, you know, Jen performed here, Jen did this clinic, did went go to that show, whatever. But no, what did you watch? 
that's what I went to. But I, of course, got sucked in by a title or something about an artichoke. And uh, and I was like, what's this about? Because it was just weird. Right. And I was like, I got to I got to watch this. So it's you trying to cook an artichoke. Which is like, wait, I totally agree. Like the juice is not worth the squeeze. It's like, this is the most ridiculous. Although artichoke hearts, I do like artichoke hearts, but, no. um, but yeah, like just watching your video on it was like, I would never do this in a million years. And you were, you're so funny. I think you end the video with like, oh no, I'm, I'm sorry. Fuck this shit. <laughs> then you turn off the camera because it's just so ridiculous. The amount of effort you got to go through to cook an artichoke for what it's, you get but anyways it's a great video <laughs> it's absolute nonsense and i don't even know why i bought this stupid artichoke and tried to boil it and it's just it's just not that's i not. know what that's like you're in the grocery store and you're like oh, oh. something new you know it and looks do- cool you know it looks intriguing and you're like oh this is gonna be fun it turns out no it's not <laughs> <laughs> totally it's like ooh. It's amazing. <laughs> There's a couple, uh, I like to grab them as they come in. So I'm just going to grab them right now. There's a couple super chats. Um, here's one that says it, uh, Helix or save for Axe FX3. Oh, you Helix. Know, oh, okay. You've got a Helix. strong opinion. Yeah. Yes. What do you like about it? I like that the... it saved my life from carrying like 11 guitars on tour back in the days with the band because, um... huh? Cookie. <laughs> Zip the beak. Um, Back in the days when I joined Evanescence, there was a lot of tunings. And for the first few shows, I remember we had like, oh my God, I carried like 11 guitars. Like, mm. it was insane. There was so much wood. And I, I, the thing is, I come from an ACDC tribute band. You know, I had an ACDC right. tribute band when I started out playing. And yeah, I had one guitar tuned E to E. And I had okay. a spare guitar tuned E to E. That's it. <laughs> and then out of a sudden you're stuck in this band and you have to have like all these different tunings from drop A to normal seven string to baritone drop C, then normal six string drop D, drop C sharp and all these tunings. Yeah. And of course, one could say like, well, why don't you just like learn to play the songs on one guitar and one tuning, but you can't because there's a certain feel of like when you hit a string and you have to play a riff with open strings, you cannot mimic that with, if you fret notes, right? So absolutely. And uh, so I had to carry freaking 11 guitars for the first round. And I felt terrible (laughs) because (laughs) the, the (laughs) the thing is when you're on stage and people watch you play, you come across like this asshole that just wants to show off guitars, you know? <laughs> Changing every song. And just like, okay, next guitar, next guitar. Let me show off all my guitars. And that yeah. was totally not it. I just had to have like all these guitars in these different tunings and then all the spare guitars. And then I was just like desperate for help. And that's when I started talking to Line 6. And that was the year when the Helix was invented. Okay. And um, they, they told me like, well, here we have your solution there's the simple pitch and now with the poly pitch it's even better and i really this little knob this little function this little thing saved me so much wood on on tour because the last tour i was just using like a a seven string tune standard and um a seven string in drop and a six string in drop and that's it so i had three guitars well plus three spare but Six guitars is way less than 11 guitars. So 100%. And was, you could transpose yes. using yes. the, yeah. And okay. also, I learned that the Helix saved my life when I, I was, you know, we would play like in Europe, we have these like little shows like the NAM show and stuff. And when I'm booked for stuff like that, I'm like, hmm, what can I play? And from my second solo album, Insanity, there's a track, the title track actually, Insanity. And do you have that sometimes when you record songs and you write songs and you, just write and you're like, oh, this would be amazing. And then you just record. And in the end, you realize you can't play the whole song on one all guitar. The time, all the time. All no, the time. on one guitar. It's yeah. like, it's just, it's terrible, right? So so I'm like, all the, the Helix, yeah. right? The Helix yeah. saves my life with that because I'm just like, oh, let me adjust here, adjust there. And then, you know, I wish the Helix could do like, but there, therefore you need to have like a very X, but to have like a different tuning, like switch from standard tuning to drop, d or something that would be amazing that would be freaking great yeah for that i think yeah you can actually do the very the is that it the very actual well the shuriken is the new one right 
like the latest the latest one is the shuriken. Right. And but it feels change. weird. Have you ever played those? No. Um, my friend Dave has one. He's got an acoustic variax, and he would do he does like little solo gigs and stuff, and he would play the rain song on it, you know, and he can do yeah. the tuning and everything. And it sounds great. It's like that works. I mean, I'm sure it's not absolutely perfect, but to get, you know, I see these things as tools. Um, and you know, when you can't bring eleven guitars, it's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. that's interesting that's interesting now did you use the 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 helix for uh, uh, just effects and with real amps and stuff or you were actually going yes. direct with it or... no i i if if i don't have to i i am very old school and i always would like to connect it with the four cable method to the awesome. effects loop and stuff and uh i am totally a big fan of synergy amps oh you're synergy now yes oh i, I used to that. i used to work with angle for like 17 years yeah. And uh, then Synergy approached me and I was like, well, that's pretty convincing. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Have you and tried I, this, yeah. the uh, Synergy angle module, like this, the Savage? and the Actually, really actually, I did try the uh, prototype of the Powerball module. The Powerball, yeah. And it was, it was so not, it was, I don't know. It was just not the Powerball whatsoever. Like not, uh. it was just not. And then, but now the final product, it is, it's like, it's amazing. It's, I think what they do is, I mean, it's not new, you know, Randall came up with that like ages ago, mm. but Synergy, I feel like they have this, they have a good mindset with um, putting this whole thing up to another level. And that's amazing. And you're not limited as a player, you know, when you like old school, like preamp, amp kind of like things. Yeah, you're not limited, and that's amazing. And I, <laughs> funny enough, I did this um, one YouTube thing show, and I went there, and I had the chance to play the uh, Steve Vai module. And yeah. I'm like, Ooh, this is gonna be exciting, right? I plugged in, and I thought immediately, stupid me, I thought like, oh, I'm gonna sound like Steve Vai. No, <laughs> 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 it, that was the hardest module ever to play. To be honest, I don't know really? why it it didn't sound like you have it, right? I do. I like it actually. Yeah, I find that the clean channel, uh, which probably not a lot of people buy it for, but it's actually super hyper Fender sparkly. Yes, um, yeah, yes. it has a it's... super nice brightness, right, to it. Yeah. Like it has this like ballerina kind of like typical 100%. vibe brightness, right? Yes. Yeah. But the gain then... channel, it's like it's like I don't know. It felt well. Weird. It's not <laughs> if if you're a rock or metal player, I feel like it's like um, probably like it's it's got a rich mid thing, and and when I hear Steve, and I've talked to Steve about. Uh, you know, he, he mentioned to me, because I really like like modded marshals and bright stuff and stuff that's got really cutting high end. He mentioned to me that like he feels like, hey, I'm the lead singer all night. And so I've got to have a sound that doesn't start to get like, right. you know, whereas he does not play in a lot of chords up there. I mean, he is, but right. you know, there's not a lot of yeah. like rhythm playing going on where you need that articulation and cut totally. that. And so his sound is so I don't I'm not sure what you, what you thought, if it was maybe sounded muddy or something or maybe um, I but, just played like shit. <laughs> interesting yeah <laughs> that's cool i mean not everything's for everybody you know uh that's for so what are some of your favorites for the uh the well synergy? honestly I'm a, I'm a big fan of all the friedman ones like the the hbe like the all the the like solid i'm i'm safe when i have that module kind of like modules right right okay like there i i tried out the um the frayette one which is really cool because of all these like little equalizing things that is the one that i really loved but yeah. um I'm, I thought when I started diving into the whole synergy thing, I thought that I might be diving into the diesel. The diesel. You know, yeah. all, all those kind of like high gain things. But honestly, it, it I wasn't, which was surprising because I yeah. completely thought that this would be my direction to go. And I was like, okay, get me that module. And it was yeah. just not. It was, it was too frizzly, too like, too, pssst, it, like, it hurts my brain. <laughs> You know, when I listened to your last solo record, because I listened, I had a pretty good listen yesterday to everything. One thing I noticed <laughs> oh, was God. that I know I love that I loved it, and I love the tones. Um, like there's a lot of really good old school. Like when you say you like the Friedman stuff, because he's all yes. about mar martially kind of optimized, you know. And right. that's really what. And I don't know if you recorded that with Angles or, but man, the angle. tones are great. That was all like my Angle uh, uh, Powerball, yeah. It's cool. And I like the Powerball. Like I thought that was, I've played yeah. that amp a little bit. And so that, well, that makes sense to me. But I started, yeah. when I started out with my ACDC band, I started out with the Fireball, which is a smaller version of the Powerball. And okay. um, then I 
you know, but as the years went on and on, I was like, well, let's try the Powerball. And it just has like more channels and more options. And and uh, I, I always stuck in between this, like, you know, there's the invader, which is the like the flag thing, like the, the big thing. You can play jazz up to death metal with that one. And yeah. there's the Fireball, which is the small, little, cute rock and roll version. And the Powerball for me is the perfect rock and roll amp. Has always mm. been, and I yeah. like the the mid sound of this amp, and it's just like what a lot of people don't understand is when you when you are sitting at home and you play by yourself. We guitar players tend to have like a metal sound that is way too low end and way too high frequencies. Like it's there's this and there's this. Mm. And we like that sound. But as soon as you're like in a in a in a band room, all these low end frequencies are being eliminated by the kick drum and the bass player. And all these high frequencies are being eliminated by the cymbals and all that. So nobody can hear you. So that's why and you can hear yourself. So that's why guitar players tend to go like, I can hear myself. Can I go to 11? You know, it's, it's just a frequency yeah. thing. And a lot of people think it's a volume issue when I think it's a lot of times it's a frequency issue. You sound like you're saying something I would say. I mean, that's yeah. a totally like the, <laughs> the upper mid cut of a Marshall or that type of amp and just right. where it lives and not, yeah. you don't need a ton of low end, leave room for the bass. You know, it's exactly. like you say, as soon as the kick drum and the bass kick in and the cymbals kick in, you got to find yep. your slot in the middle. I mean, it's why I actually love uh, AC30s. It's a very... Focus, yeah, totally. mid-range, targeted sound. That's why Brian Absolutely. May was like, he had this Absolutely. Epic, yeah, it's like right there and right living in a great space, Sonic. I mean, I don't see an AC-30, for example, with a high gain band like, you know, Evanescence, for example. But yeah, totally. <laughs> but the, when, when we talk frequencies, that's definitely the ultimate amp. That's why Brian May has a sound that he has, right? Yeah, yeah, not with metal bands so much. Although, I mean, the early day, a lot of Richie Blackmore's earliest stuff. I mean, when I listen to Burn, that is the AC30. He he played in the studio AC30 a lot, and right. then you know live it was like 200 watt Marshalls and stuff. But right, it, right, AC30 was staple part of his tone, and he's like proto hard rock for sure, right? And um, and Brian, I mean, it was just it's a, such a great sound. But anyway, yeah, slotting mm -hmm. right in there in the mids is. Such a cool... That was a long answer for Helix or SFX. <laughs> That's okay. That's what we do on this show. We just take off in various directions. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Uh, do you use any kind of like, so like the modeling and those things or like for recording or doing it? Like if you go to do a, uh, oh. you mentioned like the guitar shows in Germany, like would you take a Helix? and? I do take my HX Stomp, to be honest. My pedal board is right next to me right now. I played the festival with how we end the first show i played it with the hx stomp <laughs> yeah perfect <laughs> but like i said even the hx stomp i connected with a four cable method and i had I, you I still use an amp i yeah well it was a festival so they provided an amp but i don't remember what it was i think it was something angle so yeah i don't know okay um but um to be to be really honest when i record my demos here at home in my studio i yeah. use a, a 10 watt th r Yamaha <laughs> hey that's cool it's, but it's, it's perfect because it's fast and you can just like plug in and it you know yeah. it's, like yeah. the THR the long kind of one that looks like a bread box the, the bread box exactly the little purse <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah those are cool and there's different them. there's different versions like the green one is the metal one and it has like all kinds of like presets so it starts with there's the Eddie Van Halen amps you know and then there's the pretty much also the fireball powerball thing and there's the mm it's all modern high gain version as well in it so and then you got the flat and the acoustic ones as well so yeah yeah and i use that a lot even sometimes um when i'm like i have to have like a mobile recording station with me yeah. instead of taking an interface and stuff i just take a thr amp because they also function as um interfaces so that's it's so good. cool yeah just like a yeah. usb interface right yeah yeah, totally. yeah. Here's uh uh Carrie says for for cookies cookies to, uh, super chat thank you cookies, very much cookie you got a super <laughs> chat cookie say hi <laughs> so awesome I'm going down to the uh, <laughs> the the uh, the comments here and uh, this this is this is so much fun having you on here let's see what do we got here uh, if it's a loss list Bent, hey. <laughs> EQ, there's bent thumb, um, yeah, like plexi style. I think you mean a lossless EQ uh, or loss. I'm not sure what you mean there exactly, but Marshall circuit 9059, I will crank everything and then EQ in front of the input. Well, yeah, on a Marshall, 
on an old plexi marshal the eq is essentially subtractive so you get the most gain if you actually put everything on 10 that's why eddie used to do it 11 11 all the way to 11 and then yeah <laughs> especially did you check mid. out my solo my my other side project called something on 11 no i didn't do i did your new band how we end right i listened to that but well how we end other... but something on 11 is a side project that i do with my friend alan brentini and we put out one album i oh god when was that like two years ago okay um tell us about that it's literally shitting on mainstream songwriting rules okay and it's one album and it's just fun it's like him singing me singing both guitar players we both play Ibanez, and um yeah it's a fun album it's it never came out like like a physical album just digital but it's yeah check it out it's it's fun you know what I like about your music, and I was going to say about your last solo album as well, and this is in contrast to, you know, you've been in bands and toured with other bands and done stuff. It's the humor. It's like, it is Absolutely. like you, because you're funny and you're fun, obviously, and that comes through on your solo stuff. And that's no, like, that's very, sweet. thank you. No, it's a big deal to me because your, your, your music, um, like, you know, had I just known you from your you know image and social media and the press and stuff like that like i've seen you i would think <laughs> metal you know what i mean and then when i listen to your music and like, why oh, is that you tell me honestly why is that why does everybody think like Gemma Jura, the german metal guitar player why in the world is that my album is not heavy metal even if it's an is not heavy metal like what the hell why does everybody say Gemma Jura, yeah, the heavy metal guitar player I know, I know, and that's kind of funny because I had to go. Actually, of course, li- listening is the ultimate, you know. And I was like, oh my, oh my god, there's so much more rock going on here than because exactly, you know, yeah. You're you're so who who are your biggest influences and like where does this come from? Your sound. You mentioned ACDC. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, well, I played in an ACDC tribute band, yes. So I've been doing that for a couple of years. But uh, I think. As of right now, one of my biggest influences is Matthias E. Eklund of the Swedish band called Free Kitchen. Okay. He's a sweetheart friend. I told you about his free guitar camp. Um, oh, and yeah, the yeah. other influence would be Steve Vai. Oh, sorry, Cookie. Did that scare you? Sorry. <laughs> um, and yeah, I also like percussive players that are like, you know, like like Nuno Bettencourt, for example. Um, that's <laughs> That's a very obvious thing. Jen loves Nuno Betancourt. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. It's I am not a big fan of these higher, faster, shredder kind of like people. Like all I can play is diminished and shred until my fingers bleed. Like I, that never did anything for me. You know, I I, right. I can I can appreciate that. I'm like, wow, that's amazing what you do. Your skills are great. But then hey. I'm sorry. So how do you differentiate um, a player like Nunu or a player like Steve from what you hear in the those types of more shreddy players that you don't like? I'm just interested in your answer to that because they shred too. But yes, diff- but it's different. It's they they do that when the song demands it, and I think there's a giant difference in people that just play fast all the time, or people who have the ability to shred. First of all. You shred cheese. You don't shred a guitar. You don't shred on guitar. You shred cheese. <laughs> right? As Marty Friedman already said. Marty is a good example, you know? He's got a beautiful sense of melody and tone and 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 phrasing. And yeah. if the song demands it, he can shred, right? He can kill it. And I like players that really do that when when there's a need for a section like that. Yeah. But don't do it because they have no other way to present themselves. You know what that in service I mean. of the music. In service yes, of the exactly. music. Exactly. What whatever the song demands. If you shred, Cookie sounds like he's shredding. <laughs> <laughs> Quack. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I told you I bring all my people from my channel. Because we just yeah. had a YouTube live premiere on my channel with That's a so cool. very cool with a very cool new series that I started today. Um talking guitar stuff. Um, because I mean, you've been on my channel, you've seen all the artichoke and the traveling and all kinds of like fun stuff that I do because I don't really give a shit what I do on my YouTube. But for <laughs> this, <laughs> I thought, well, it would be nice to have like, let's start from the beginning. I yep. have a music school and I am teaching and I love to teach. And sometimes I would teach certain things to my students. And I, I say that in like on a side 
kind of know. And I realized that that's a big deal for my student because some things for us players are so naturally normal and we don't even think about those anymore. Mm. Um, but then I realized like when the second I say it out loud, I'm like looking into my student's eyes and, and he or she goes like, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I thought about the whole thing like, well, talk about basic stuff, like things that are so clear, but maybe you can learn a little something or just maybe some beginning exercises or I don't know, just we'll see where this goes. So I just started this whole guitar stuff with Jen Majora thing today. So that's going to be fun. That's so awesome. I mean, I think it's a really great point is that we take things for granted that we know yeah. how to do, that we do second nature. Yeah. Things like, um, you know, proper muting or, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. just like good time or uh, like little things, you know, little tricks and things that we've yep. worked out. And then when a student can ask you, like, how do you do that? Like that thing, you're like, well, and you ha actually have to analyze it because you don't exactly. think about it. Like, exactly. Exactly. Oh yeah, I'm muting with my left hand as well as oh I, oh I exactly. wrap my thumb around to mute the low east. You don't even think you about it exactly. And it's, exactly it's, that stuff. Yeah, yeah and we cool. do things like just we just do it and we don't think about it because it's so engraved in our skills and our chops and our playing. And I I truly believe it's cool to like spread that knowledge out there. And you know whatever yeah. like maybe one day I'm gonna teach how to play arpeggios or something or not. There's a fly in my room. Why are you here? Go away. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you have the uh, the advantage um, that it, we're similar, actually, in a couple of ways, because you gig, you've been out there, you've done it. I mean, pre YouTube, pre everything, you know, you're out playing and you and there's some there's a lot of amazing stuff on YouTube, amazing guitar players. But I feel yeah. like that's a niche that that I actually live in. And that you actually live in that um you've got the benefit of that experience of like a loud amp at a festival on stage that's maybe uh, a rental and you can talk about how to make that work or you can talk about how you know play you know what i mean like all these experience totally. like things with guitar that you can offer that you can only get that experience by having been there done that uh well i think i think there's there's a big difference in being a successful youtube bedroom player we all call them bedroom players right Right. With their cute little plugins and their cute little two watt amps and their headphones and their teeny little sounds and it's <laughs> all nice and sweet. Yes, great, you can play fast, but motherfucker, just go deal with a full stack on a fucking festival stage. You are gonna be <laughs> blown away by the fucking feedback. <laughs> it's just that was one of the biggest compliments that I ever got from my friend Matthias when I joined Free Kitchen for the first time playing live on stage because they were they are loud. They are like a rock band and they are loud on stage. Yeah. And um, we played soundcheck and stuff. And he walks up to me and the first thing he says is like, you have very good control over your instrument. <laughs> right. That was a nice, really nice compliment because, yes, it's hard. Like deal with an, with an electric guitar. Electric guitars on stages that are like rock and roll loud. They're yeah. bitches. It's it's true, right? And they're yeah. hard to deal with if you are not aware of what's a feedback, where to stand, like how to deal with that if, if a guitar out of a sudden the amp feedbacks and shit. Yeah. And you have to learn that. You have to learn that and get out there and play. So that's my big advice to all young up and coming players. Like if you can play fast in your bedroom, that's nice. It's cute. Yeah. Can you play standing? That's another right. thing. <laughs> like, can you, okay, stand up and play that on a strap? It's a whole different exactly. animal. Even, even just in your room, you know. Exactly. You can do it. Exactly. Yeah. And if you can do that, him. then just yeah. stand in front of a mirror and try to look as if you actually enjoy playing and just put on a rock show. And right, right. then you right. might consider going to a rehearsal space and deal with the feedback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah, sound yeah. like an old fart now. Oh my god! No, no, no! This is what you this you do not. This is this is uh, the valuable <sighs> shit. Um, shredding sounds muddled in an ambient room. Says Earl. I mean, that's totally true too. Like the this is the other thing yes. about like a guy like Steve Vai. Um, yeah. that guy, man. The last time I saw him actually play live, you know, when we think of shredding, okay, he might have been one of the originals that what you know that you know, Crossroads and stuff, and and the Attitude song, and like he was right at the forefront of all that, you know, doing doing that style of like super impressive playing and stuff. But when you see that guy play live, like in an arena, either his solo show or with other artists, he knows how to take you on a ride and he knows what to play absolutely. in that setting. And you're absolutely, absolutely right. There, there's sometimes like 
there's sometimes when you know the arpeggio and the like it's just lost but steve you'll never he even even if the mix isn't great or whatever he takes the audience on this ride with his guitar playing that's uh, and that's a skill it's like a absolutely skill. the last time i saw him play um because my friend danny he does monitors for him and actually danny yeah. convinced steve to use in ears that's the funniest oh. story of all times i mean steve has been using like monitors like monitor veggies for like ever right yeah and so danny my friend um <laughs> was like well you should maybe try in years and steve was like well we can try that but you know that's what i like about him he's always open-minded always uh -huh. he's such a phenomenal beautiful spirit and person and i just love that as well as as much as i love his playing i love his personality 100%. and his knowledge and stuff and yeah. um so steve was kind of like well we can try but you know probably not and now Steve yeah. uses in-ear monitors. I'm like, wow. really? Wow. <laughs> I'd be really interested to know from your friend exactly what he did to make him happy. Well, you know, with, with Danny's his just being fantastic and fabulous. That's what he did. That's what I mean, though. Like, what, <laughs> let's nail that down. Like, what is that? What's the thing he gave to Steve? Because that's a big guitar players are the toughest with in-ears, you know? That's, I, that's I true. Personally, it's and I don't like it. I, I don't like it. Um, the first time yeah. I ever got in touch with in-ears was when I joined Evanescence, of course. Because, yeah. you know, I, I had a company contacting me um, about in years when I was playing in that ACDC tribute band. And then I said to the guy, like, dude, listen, we are five girls rocking out like it's dirty. It's loud. I just yeah. fucking roll on the floor in circles while playing. Like, I can't have in years in my ear. Like, <laughs> this is no. <laughs> I throw a fucking bottle of water on my head while I play. Like, this is not going to happen. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm a very loyal person when it comes to working with companies and um so when i had to deal with in ears i was contacting exactly that company again and that guy again and i said listen you offered me the deal like four years ago now i have to have a deal would you still be interested in dealing with me because all the others were of course like coming yeah. at me as soon as you have like this stamp on your forehead of this two grammy award winning band everybody wants to work with you right it's crazy. And um, so I went to my friend who offered me the deal like years before that. And yeah. he said, yes, OK, let's do that. And I must say it's as a singer, because I'm also a vocalist, as a singer, I love, love, love in ears on stage. I do. Yeah. Yeah. As a guitar player, I still need that four by 12 behind me to have this like yeah. It's just the doesn't work in your ears. It just doesn't. And no matter how many like little amps you have inside of there and how much subwoofer, whatever, yeah. it just doesn't work. You need to feel it in your, in your, I need to feel it in like, if I had balls, I would need to feel it in my balls. <laughs> that's going to be a quote. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's... A make a reel out of that and put it up later oh god this is horrible no but that's it's a, that, totally but that's the truth. descriptive okay Guitar i've got players, something to show you here. I, okay yeah all right i've got something to what? show you because these are were my closest solution to um, okay to what we're talking about these are a generic set from a company called asi and these things so this is their little generic buds and stuff and you can get molds of these but these actually have you probably can't see but there's a microphone right there Oh, yeah. And then they have a separate pack here. So you start to look like a, you know. What's the name of the company? Network. I just I just had something like that from oh. the company called In-Ear in Germany. And they did the same thing. With the mics? Yeah. The, like the mics were attached to the cable here, like to the oh. little cord. And you can and, blend them in. And you can just use your molds and just like, you know, connect them and use the cable with the little microphone. And you can blend it. Oh, you can same use In-Ear in with it. Yes. Oh, so that's it's in crazy. ear. It's your in ear and blending the microphone, like the ambience. Oh, that's very interesting because you could use whatever ears you want then. Okay, that's cool. These actually are like, you know, this is a set and they got the mics built in, and then you've got a separate pack and you can blend in the ambience at any level. There's an app. Same idea, yeah. Yeah, similar, but that's neat that somebody makes one that you could use. I'd, I'd be interested in checking that out as well. But this is well, the closest I've I come can have to them being... send you some. I'm definitely interested because I'm I'm about to head out. Soon oh, hey, near. by the way, suggesting yeah. stuff. Would you like to have Ola England on your show? Oh, of course. Are you kidding? Okay. Yeah, I love that guy. Absolutely. Okay. I know you guys are let friends. Me, and Let me text him. Yeah. 
He's big time, I'm though. He's, I might be right too now. small time for him. I don't know. He's going to be all like. Oh, come on. Ola is a gem. And... I love Ola. I met him once. Can, I, so can, I, can I text sweet. him? I know. He said, uh, I have Pete in my contacts. Met him a bunch of years ago yep. back then. Hope everything is well with you. That's what he texted me this morning. Oh, cool. So now I'm I'm texting him. Pete Thorne wants you. Oh, well, I would love to do anything with him. This show or something on his or just something together. I, I think he's brilliant. I, he's really funny. Yes. Um, it's no, it's no uh, you know, mystery to me why you guys are friends because you're both funny and fun. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, you know the and funny great. thing is I've been we've been pretty much we we've known each other since like the early years of his YouTube. And now hmm. I watch him and he became this like super YouTube rock star, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's so cool. I'm happy for him. He's he's a good hearted guy and he's he's amazing. Seems like it. I and mean, he, I love his and he uh, does the business right. I have to give it to him. Like there's a yeah. lot of little things that he does where I'm like, yeah, smart. Yeah, he seems like he's got a real handle on the uh all the aspects of like, you know, from you know, obviously all the you know, not to sound like you know, there's all these ways you can monetize things <laughs> and he seems yes. to have the business <laughs> i mean when it comes to uh you know everything yeah. from merch to work marketing and you know but this yes. is what we have to do these days right i mean we're well, just, of course we're, we're, this is what we do. look this at me we... i'm working on cookie merchandise right now <laughs> why wouldn't you you know it's right? like, that's exactly funny. but yeah. i but then i went on this teespring thing like i thought well that would be great to have like a cookie likes to shower yeah. Right. So my budgie loves to shower in the morning. So every morning he gets up and I never close his cages. He has two cages, one in the bedroom, one in the living room, and he can pick where he wants to stay and sleep. Yeah. And in the morning, it's never closed. So he can just fly out. And so whenever I walk into the bathroom in the morning, he's flying right in there and he wants to take a shower. And I <laughs> there's this thing on his TikTok. It's like Cookie taking a shower, shower burp. Yeah. And uh, people love watching him shower. <laughs> and so I thought maybe, hey, I should do like a shower curtain with cookie on it. And then I, I designed the whole thing. And then I was like, okay, Teespring, tell me how much does that cost? And he goes like 79 bucks. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> you never know. I mean, people might no. want it. <laughs> 79 bucks for a shower curtain. Come on. <laughs> it's like, no. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. That seems like a lot for a shower curtain. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But you never know. There could be some super fans out there. Might just mm -hmm. go for it. Yeah, Teespring is a cool thing. Teespring is one of, for those out there that don't know, it's it's there's a whole thing with merch these days. It's where mine comes from. I mean, basically, you can design merch and you don't have to buy it uh, and keep these stocks of cardboard boxes of medium T-shirts and large T-shirts and all this, uh, you know, and then the shipping that you have to deal with and returns and uh, Teespring does all that stuff. So they, you know, somebody will order a coffee mug from you or a shirt. And Teespring handles the printing of the shirt, the design, they ship it, they handle all that stuff. Now, of course, you're they're taking a big cut for, but it's a way to have merch without having to go all in, like without if, having the trouble. Yes, with the trouble, you know. Now, somebody like Ola or you know <laughs> that paddle show, or they they've actually you know they've made the effort to. I mean, it's a huge part of the. I business. mean, obviously, I I've been to Ola's office, and he started out with Teespring. That's why I literally yeah. started working with teespring but but then yeah. he just had the ability to move forward and just like get this t-shirt printing I devices and stuff and yeah. it's it's so cool and i i went to his office and i'm like i want to make a t-shirt i want to see how you do that and that's how you do that what yeah. i what i really appreciate about them is like they they i mean frederick his brother is taking care of that and like they literally print every t-shirt that's that's so that's, cool. I mean, that's it it's lovely, and I love that he keeps his business in this family environment, and he really takes care of his supporters. That's right? so cool. Yeah, and um, I, I it's love an that. investment yeah. too, and a risk because obviously buying. I was looking at that machine and thinking, what does that cost? Like that big T-shirt printing machine must be, you know. And you got, oh, yeah, that's an investment you got to make if you're like. But it is if you're dedicated in. You know, yeah, but if the... you were when you're like a rich, rich rock star like Ola, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> he's he's gonna give you shit. <laughs> oh, totally. Oh, uh, yeah. He's great. You he's know, I, great. I I can't um, even talk enough about Ola with his polls every life uh, chat in every Sunday with Ola. He, he yeah. Man, this guy is like doing his polls about Jen Majura, Hen Mahura, and whatever. It's like every Sunday. <laughs> and then at one point, he started going like, happy birthday, Jen. 
out of a sudden the whole world tells me happy birthday just because Ola said that. <laughs> right, like, right, 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 ah, right. What are you doing? <laughs> so he's 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 a he's a brilliant guy, and I would I would like to know him better. He's really I love these guys that are like him and Beato and like um you know Paul Davids, and I find them all really really fascinating because when I started to meet all these folks, I, um at uh, YouTube events and like, you know, uh, or at guitar summit or like the different places that, you know, that you tend to run into people, yeah. um, that, you know, there's a lot of grumbling that goes on in this business about people to get a rough break and, you know, this, this happens to them that, or they could never quite, you know, they're, they're clamoring for a gig or like whatever it is, you know what I mean? A lot of that kind of energy in this business, those guys all exist outside of that. And it's fascinating to me because it's like a bunch of people that are basically running their own small business. And they're not waiting for anybody to do it for them, you know, yeah. and you do that as well, because you've got a YouTube channel, you put effort in and and to, you know, it, it's it's just a, the modern way of like, and it's like, that's the energy I, I'm interested in. Is. But I have to say that I started YouTube pretty much as a as a fun thing. You know, there, there are too. there are people that approach YouTube as like an income source. Yeah, and right. That also at the same time um, puts you into this like pressure spot right you 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 have to be function you you yeah. you, you have to put stuff out there yes. and i was always like hey, i don't want that so right, i don't right. really monetize my stuff and i just do it for fun yeah because i for me personally those video edits are like like another creative outlet i, I like to do that because i work with final cut and and putting videos together is an art form for me, same like cooking, not necessarily boiling artichokes, but cooking right. in general, you know, cooking, video editing, uh, knitting, painting, music. Yeah. It's art. It's creating something. And I like editing videos. And I wish I could talk about what I'm editing right now because that's going to come out later this month and it's going to be fantastic. And the world's going to go like, oh, what the fuck, Jen? So I'm okay. editing a, a Hollywood movie music video right now <laughs> amazing cool i can't wait to see it and uh yeah and i i've always done youtube as like a fun thing and probably that's why i don't try to pretend to be this channel personality i try to i really think that if you have a voice that is being heard by people yeah. you should use that voice very very wisely and if you if you have the possibility to spread good vibes and spread a little bit of knowledge or spread a laughter or a smile or whatever, do that because the world is a serious place. We have enough worries on this planet. Yeah. So if I can produce anything, any content that will take away worries for just like five minutes or 10 minutes, that's my goal. And I don't need to get rich or monetize or whatever like i i do this for fun and for selfish for myself because i like doing it <laughs> but just to play devil's advocate for a second i mean uh, ironically what ends up happening is when that's where it's coming from hmm. then you get your people that are you know because i, I can have say a similar thing like all the folks that are here right now a yeah. lot of them have been coming back for years and years and years because yeah. they just have fun here and talk about guitar and we forget about the world for a minute and you're and, you're just like honest you're you're you you know you are too there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of people that that put on this masquerade kind of like personality when they are presenting themselves yeah and i've i yeah. i i never could do that you know yeah if somebody yeah. tells me like hey be more of like a rock star don't don't be so friendly just don't stop be funny like how how the hell right. am i supposed to do that it's just that's me deal with it or just don't watch it that's, and that's, that's what the easy people connect, that. that honesty is what people connect with i mean it's like you know uh, here's the, here's the the thing for me is that as i cuz i never started out to do this as any kind of monetary you know it was always just like oh what am i going to do i can teach some lessons talk right. about gear you know whatever it's going to yeah. be um if i had if that had been my you know my intention in the beginning i probably yeah. would have gone a slightly different direction with it and been more focused you know but instead i went into the the niche that i went into and it's yeah. it's, it's the the ironic thing is like when i do a pedal video okay i'm working for somebody you know and i am yeah. earning something and i have figured out the ways to make this a part of my income um but right. i don't think of it that way when i make a video i just did a video for a strymon delay pedal thing sounds great i just hook it up and i start playing and writing 
and the music comes out and I just, I try and forget about any of the work or, you know, uh, monetary aspect or anything like that. And I just write a cool, like hopefully tune that I'm happy with that if nobody ever heard it, you know, I, I just be like, this is for me, you know, and I just do exactly. it and I make the coolest thing that I can do. And then I just edit that into a video and put it out. And that's my whole, let me ask you this. Here. When yeah. you, when you do when you're being paid for doing like honestly I got offers like that do a review for this or that and I yeah I just didn't because I don't want to be I I don't I just don't want to do that right <laughs> and okay. uh, the the thing is like if you are being paid would you just in the end still go like man this device is amazing the no. fart pedal or whatever would no, you be honest and pedal. just like you know whatever <laughs> but you would was be... a no-brainer i had to make a video that i did for free okay. <laughs> <laughs> did you hey have you done a, a test of the uh cock blocker no oh is that the uh the the, uh... the noise gate that glenn did no no oh glenn uh, fricker yes I can tell you this yeah. noise gate is freaking amazing. It's the okay. most musical and most dynamic noise gate that I've ever, ever. That's important. Who makes it? What's the tested. company? Well, Glenn, 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 Glenn gave it to me. Yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> I oh. think he works with Rev, you know. There's some good, oh, with Rev. There's some good ones coming out now. There's another one I know of I can't. Uh, talk about yet but it's killer there's some amazing shit going on with noise gates right now it's weird you know the eddie van halen pedal to the uh sd 3000 delay the evh pedal yes uh okay that thing has a noise suppressor in it and i'm like okay a delay with a noise suppressor i don't i didn't understand when i first tried it when i first got involved mm -hmm. with boss because i helped with the development of it but i'm like what's the point point? and i was like they were showing me how you can hook this delay up for cable method and so it's right. the first thing in your chain, but then it actually goes in the amp effects loop and stuff. And I'm like, okay. why? And they're like, well, so you can use the noise suppressor. I'm like, that who buys a delay for a noise suppressor? Well, I tried <laughs> it. If you watch my video on it, it's pretty high gain sound and stuff. And I actually okay. show how amazing the noise suppressor. It's like, this yeah. is unbelievable, actually. Like the way that it triggers off the guitar input. Nice. And um, it's seamless. It, you know, it's not right. like an old gate where there's the chatter. Yeah. And the bullshit, yeah. Know? Yeah. Like so most, cool. most modern noise gates are just like, cutting so harsh it's like yeah. it's the stuttering of the tone it's like you play a note especially with high bendings you go like ee, 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 ee. yeah 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 <laughs> right it's terrible or you roll the volume down a bit and you want to play like a cleaner passage and it's like that yeah the threshold's all screwy it's um but that they're, they're finding ways to get around that these days pretty cool that's true yes. yeah well i'll have to check out glenn's i like glenn as well he's a cool guy oh i he's love him. A, glenn yeah hi Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't compare Ola to Beato, but I get what you're saying. Well, there's plenty of actually, uh, Todd, there's plenty of similarities between them because to be I honest. I don't think so. Well, not. Uh, well, yes. The, you, yes. I, I get what you're saying. But still, Ola is such a personality. And, and you know, I Ola and I have been friends forever. So I, I don't know, Rick, but there's a difference in their, like how they present their channels. I mean, Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Ab no, absolutely. But the similarities are that they're both quality Successful? driven, I think, to do. What's that? Successful. <laughs> Successful. Well, and there's a that's the similarity is the is mm -hmm. that the, the motivation there. I feel because Rick is I mean, I love, you know, you get big, you're going to take heat from people for sure. But I've known Rick for a long time. And uh, there he is. Just look at him. It's just that's good. What picture. a stupid like, picture. I love this picture. No, I love it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he's when I met him, I couldn't believe how tall he was. He's like six foot like five or something, right? But he's, he's a like, Viking. He's like tower. Yeah, he's a Viking. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense, right? I'm gonna connect you two. Yeah. You have to have him on your show. Yeah. See, somebody says here, Ola marketing Pete artist. Well, not I mean, you know, I think I share a lot of he's played in bands too. I mean, he plays in, you know, he he's still a plays in bands. Yeah, he's a professional guitarist. So we share that. It's just he's, it's just the thing and I get it. It's like he's a family provider as well, right? Right. So right. YouTube is his income. It's just hundred percent. Yeah. Exactly. And so if you step away from your income to play shows, which you have done before. It's it's hard, and I get it. I'm and suffering I... with that right now a little bit, like dealing with the the back. I've got a, a tour coming up, and um, I've toured a lot this year actually, compared to good for you. you. Know, it's, it's like it's get yeah, but it it does take away from and I, and I do feel the the pressure of like 
this is my small business and how do I, you know, balance it exactly. all? Exactly. It's just a life balance thing. But I mean, I lucky, luckily play. enough, we have like laptops and, and MacBook Airs and shit and we can just like do that literally from everywhere. So you can, do, and it's also yeah. when you're on tour, you can do these on the road kind of like lives and, and that's cool. Yeah. You know, it's not like you're homebound and you have to do it at home and you're at your studio, like physically being there. No, so it's that's, better. that's good. It's just exactly. It, it feeds, just, it right? just takes, like, it just takes. Uh, it it just adds a little bit more pressure in the back yeah. of your head. Like you have to yeah. be f delivering because that's a business you're growing. And yeah, yeah I made a video on the quad cortex and how I use it to warm mm -hmm. up and play through my laptop speakers. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, well, what can I show? It's all the things that like the videos that you couldn't make if you were here in your studio. Cause why would you, but I had my quad cortex like uh, hooked up uh, via USB to my laptop and I realized, oh, I can just set the, the, you know, output of the laptop for the internal speakers and I can actually use my laptop like a little practice amp and play right. through the speakers on the laptop. And I was like, hey guys, let me show you how you can do that. Like that's a useful little video, five minute yeah, video. Totally, totally. You know, that, and it's, um, it, it, you also get inspired on the road to do stuff exactly like that, right? Yeah, that, yeah. So it's, it's, it's cool. But at the same time, what I'm saying is like, you always have in the back of your head, this kind of like, I have to produce content. Yeah. And even even I have that. It's it's stupid, even though I don't have to, because I yeah. just do this for fun. But I'm like, well, what's next step? What can I do? It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just a yeah. thing nowadays, apparently. I don't know. As soon as not, you run a YouTube channel and you have audience. Not to shift gears here, but here's a question. <laughs> what hair <laughs> dye are me. you using, dude? <laughs> it's pretty convincing. Is this dude you or is this dude me? <laughs> It could be either of us, I guess. Well, I'm naturally Asian, so it's just yeah, yeah. black. I'm sorry. I'm very boring. <laughs> but well, I had I, okay. red hair, like, plenty of times in my life. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen pictures of you with, like, or red streaks little and stuff. red, <laughs> orange stuff. But, yeah. yeah. That's always fun when you got to bleach it out and, like, the whole nine yards. And it looks orange. Then it gets like yellow then it gets like transparent then it breaks off and you only have half of the hair on the top of your head that's when you totally. shave it's like oh so much fun yes so I had guys, a nightmare don't dye your ago. hair <laughs> i did mine blue so it was like electric blue like a few you years had ago blue when, hair yeah like 2018 when i went on tour in japan it was short but it was like and i thought i gotta do something fun for this tour oh, like wow, just cool. a series of dates so i did it it was like blue like like uh like metallic blue with like a lot of silver how in did it. that and, grow out um, it was a friggin' nightmare. I mean, it, la it looked great for like three days and then it like starts <laughs> to get weird. And I said, they gave me this silver shampoo to use in it so that it would like kind of retain the color, but that Ooh. stuff kind of made it like, and so anyways, like a month goes by and I get, it's starting to look not good. And, and I go in to get it done again. We're like, Ooh, yeah, we gotta, we gotta bleach this out and kind of start over. So she like ble bleaches it out and it is like orange, like this really terrible <laughs> orange color. And it's, she's like, oh, I think I'm going to do it again. Cause I don't think <laughs> oh, shit. So then it does it again. And now it's getting like, fried and I'm just like, and then she tries to do it the blue again, but it doesn't look quite as good. When I left, it looked okay. I get home, I wash it the next day, like really gentle. And it's like all the blue came out and it's just orange. Again. I'm like, ah, uh, I need help. Like this is not good. <laughs> like I was starting to panic. She was like, I don't know. Oh like, my goodness. And kind of like just sort of blew me off like after that. And this was an old friend of mine that did this job and I it was like created a bit of a rift. Anyways, I went to the to the, the store and I go, give me some black dye now. <laughs> just dyed it black. Give me like the <laughs> the permanent. Oh my god. The gnarly, yeah. What a horror. Everything. That on tour, like when you're like forced to like have a look. That's yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Tough. Well, no, my last no, tour no. that I did, I had a mohawk, so I was like shaving constantly. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's always fun, right? You got. And it's safe it. to say I'll yeah. never do that again. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. good that I yeah. did it once. I got it out of the way, bucket list, you know. But yeah, am I gonna do yeah. it again? Nope, <laughs> absolutely <Yeah>. not. <laughs> I'm gonna actually answer this question because it's like, okay, so I did actually use something about a month ago uh, to just make my hair a little darker because. I hate my mousy brown color naturally, but the weirdest thing is this. I have very little gray for my age, and I'm not going to mention how old I am. People out there probably know, but I'm, a, I'm an old bastard. So, uh, But this, this is pretty much my natural color, just a little bit darker. I get a little bit of gray coming in here, a little bit of gray, and it, that's it. Like, there's very little. I don't know what the hell. My beard, if that grows in, <laughs> look like my age when that beard grows in. It's super gray. And I've got gray in my eyebrows now. <laughs> What a pain in the ass. Anyways. Oh, I think you froze. Jen froze. 
I just really I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm on my way back. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. You froze with a cool smile, though. You were like, <laughs> all right. Technically, I'm not sure if I need to add her back to the stream here. Okay. I should frozen. be back right now. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm back. Yes. I'm sorry. So here's the thing I live, um, I live <laughs> in a castle. <laughs> Really? And I have a moat. I have a moat that goes around my property. <laughs> and that's, the that's moat like a, is... That's, that's like a textbook German thing or something. I don't know. We imagine yeah. you living no, in a castle. The, the, well, I live in a castle. It's built in 1705. No. And, um, yeah. yeah. Wow. And, and the thing is, it has a moat that goes around the whole thing. And so my connection, my internet connection here at home is terrible. <laughs> uh -huh. So if I am forced, like, working... I, I did... An album production, I can say that. I did an album production uh, remotely working from home, recording an entire album and tons of tracks and stems and shit. And I had hmm. to upload them and download and upload and download and export. Sure. And it took me, it took 99.9% .9 of my nerves to do that because my <laughs> connection here is saying. really, really, really bad. <laughs> But you live in a oh, castle, yeah. so that's the the uh, the bonus. Yeah, that's cool. It's, it's I'm nice. Take a of this place. Uh, absolutely. I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot you in like a text, and then you can see where I live. It's it's really nice, and I appreciate it because it's like my little paradise place. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I I have nothing but like a we have a you know we have a forest here. We have lakes. So cool. Uh, a Baroque rose garden. Um. It's really Amazing. nice. You get out in the uh, the countryside there, and it's really beautiful. I love um, driving around there and some of the smaller towns and stuff. And the way, yeah, it's like it's really gorgeous. Um, Here, I'm sending you a text here. right now so you can see okay. my castle. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna check this out. <laughs> it, it's going to space, and then it's gonna come to me. Yes, there we yes, go. it's it's gonna travel. Oh wow, Get it traveled fast. Yeah, told you. You live in there. <laughs> That's crazy. Mm -hmm. What the hell? <laughs> I've got a condo. <laughs> I've got a castle. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's doing good. Uh, I don't know why I'm not going to show this to everybody. Just no, not. no, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, That's how'd nice. you land that situation? Uh, I found Curious. it. Well, to, to, to be frequently honest it's i mean the the main castle is yeah. owned by my landlords okay people right so i live in the it's pretty much the butler's <laughs> apartment okay. yeah and uh yeah so but it's perfect it's like you, when you're a touring musician you don't want to have this giant mansion that you have to clean every single time you're back home for like two weeks or something it's like oh. i know you're you you're you went you got into all this space and you just started dusting instantly so i think you're exactly <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Right. So it's it's like, you know, I, I wanted to have like this nice, um, cuddly, perfect gen gen place. And this is yeah. it. And I'm really happy. And I just I was just lucky enough to find it. It seems really cool. Is this your studio room that you're in now or? Oh, yeah. Where you yeah. record? And what's your setup That's like what? there as far as like being able to play and record? I can, and I can tell you this is so embarrassing. Well, it's, it's okay. I've got my I've got my Helix, like yeah. the old school pedal board right here. I've got a audiogram Yamaha interface. I got my THR here. I got a little keyboard here. Uh, I've got my, which I really love, my old NS10. Um, oh, cool. Because the new ones are different. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I, I realize like people who have the old NS10, they, they don't want to sell them. It's like so hard yeah. to get original old and it's 10. And I you love know there's those. A, there's fantastic. a new version being made of it by um, Chris or Algae has some company. I know. You drive those? And yeah, I don't know how good they are compared to the, you know, but no, check them out. I, I, I don't know. I just love the, I just love them because they have such a brutal, honest, shitty sound. Yeah. 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 Can I say that? <laughs> Yeah, you know, and it's just I, I love working with them. So I got I used to working on them as well. I mean, years ago, that was the thing, and it was like, okay, you kind of have to make the guitars like cut your head off, and yes. you can if the bass is clearly audible, then there's too much bass. When like, it comes to mixing, how do you do mix it? Like when when you check mixes, 
How do I? Uh, because do I there know was when? there was a discussion this morning at Sunday with Ola. Yeah. Was it with Sunday with Ola when when it comes to mixing? How do you mix? Yeah. Um, which devices do you listen to? Well, I've got a set of Barefoots here that are more sort of midfield, and I've got a set of Atom A7Xs. Mm -hmm. The Atoms I've used for years, and I'm that's my real like I'm the most comfortable on those because I just got used to them. Yeah. And I just figure that uh, whatever you get used to and you feel comfortable on is like if you are listening on something, you're like, I don't know what's going on. That's the worst feeling when you're yeah, like, absolutely. I can't. Like when you listen to a record, you know, or something that uh, something you've been working on, you take it to another studio and you listen, you're like, oh, this feels very like I'm lost in space here. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. That's the worst. So for me, it's about the comfort of your monitors, getting a set of monitors and getting whatever, it, if it's NS10s, if it's atoms, if it's, you know, big ones, small ones, whatever it is, you got to be comfortable and know what's going on so that you, do you check it in a car or do you check it on like a like a little boom box or something? I really I, I mean, the first thing I'll do is get in my car afterwards and I'll usually go out and, and, and listen and, you know, my car sounds pretty good. So it's like, but I, but I've gotten to the point to be quite honest where I don't really need to do that. Like just on these, I know what's going on. Cause after oh. I got it, my first set of A7s in 2006, I think. Okay. So it's like, it's so many years of being on the same speaker essentially that um, I, I kind of know what's happening, you know, with it. I learned so. one trick and that is taught to me by my guy who, who did with me the engineering and mixing and mastering of my latest solo album in Zenity. Yeah. Um, he said he always takes, like if he's checking a mix, he yeah. takes like the mix and plays it in his studio and goes to the next door bathroom. Oh, cool. And listen and I don't I don't know I don't know what that does but I tried it yeah. and you hear so many more frequencies that you were totally not aware of you you hear the mix so different so mm -hmm. this is now something that I would always recommend like play it blast it in your studio and then go to the bathroom and sit in the bathroom <laughs> and listen Walk to the, the other room it's, that's really interesting it's yeah. really really like it does something I, I can't explain it but it does something no, it's super good advice. Like walk out of the room, go around the corner and listen, you know, go sit in the bathtub. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's almost like a guitar cabinet. It's like, um, I remember talking to Friedman about this, where he feels like a 412. You can really hear what it sounds like when you're standing like right on top of it. Like, so like when the head's in front of you and you're like, and it's kind of like at pant level it's and blasting like against the, your balls. Essentially. Yeah. And, and he's like, that way I can tell like, cause you know, you're never going to be in front. It's always going to sound kind of like, we know what that sounds like, but it's like that sound of being kind of, and I, I, I get what that's like, but, um, Ooh, I forgot. I was going to say something and then I just forgot. Cause I want to make a point about this. Cause it's, Oh yeah. Yeah. So, um, one thing I learned, uh, many years ago, this friend of mine used to have a little speaker, one of those oratones, you know, oh, yeah. and he would, and he would have it in mono and he would actually like listen to the mix in. Mo so mixing on the main, mono, he's getting it dialed in, but then the little aura tone in mono is how he would do vocals. Um, uh, and it, so it was really quiet. And he had this thing about, you want to get the vocal, um, in that little mono, it, cause it kind of simulated TV speakers or whatever was small at the time, you know, mm -hmm. and he would mix the vocal on there and he would listen to a really low level. And then he just mixed the vocal where, um, you could hear every word just just you know where it's like i can in, at a low volume i can in, I, every word is intelligible all the lyrics and then when you turn it up it kind of sounds like it's dropped in the mix the vocal it can seem a little low um but it's perfect you know interesting when I listen, does that make sense like um yeah yeah like mixing really quiet and just getting the vocal to sit right on top just every word's intelligible at a low low volume and then when you turn it up it's like that's the right volume for the vocal. interesting and it's right oh, wow. in the band and not too loud you know? Yeah, especially in hard rock and rock music and stuff where the vocals too loud on top of the mix that can be really it sounds like karaoke all of a sudden you know it doesn't sound <laughs> right so but you're a great I singer think i always and, i think i always mix vo my vocals too loud, <laughs> too loud. well that's it try this method try this method just even it doesn't even matter if it's in mono or not or tone mix it really quiet and try and get all the vocal just to, and then see what you think yeah you interesting know? yeah and i learned that from this uh this mentor of mine many years ago and i thought it was a really good good little trick i kind of do the same thing with guitar i mean lead guitar just getting it to the point where it's like okay it's clear sometimes i'm i'm probably guilty of mixing lead guitar too low and having the rhythms push too that's low a, that's interesting yeah because i want what the kind of guitar you know, player I mean, are like, you <laughs> well don't you find when you're when you're like it don't, it, don't you find when you're like doing it what's that <laughs> i said what kind of guitar player are you <laughs> i'm shy i'm sorry no i'm not that shy but 
but no, I like to I like to have the the rhythm like that's the power, and it's like you know sometimes it's like hard. I mean Eddie Van Halen was brilliant because how do you how do you rhythm. pan your guitars like when you record, like let's yeah. say rhythm versus solo. Solo is one track center, right? How do you pan the guitars? Like usually, tracks do you do? I mean, I generally get the rhythm guitars out wide. I just think things should be left right, like wide, right? But then solos like really left right, like a hundred percent left, a hundred percent right. Generally speaking, that's what I not maybe sometimes it's brought in a hair, but it's generally yes. I mean, wow, that's okay. the uh, and there's a, there's a lot of, of great mixers I know that are that are kind of I think maybe it's Chris Lord Algae or somebody's like that. That's like no, 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 ten o'clock, none of this. Like with most of the tracks, he's like basically like it's either here, here, or here. You know, and the um, thing is, if you work with minutes. backing tracks, let's say you work with a PA on a, let's say, festival stage for whatever reasons, you play alone <laughs> with backing tracks. Mm. On a festival stage, and then yeah. you have this giant panning left right situation with tracks that are super panned left right. That's a different thing. Oh no. Well, that's a different oh, thing. And I don't I generally avoid doing that. I hate playing the tracks. Um yeah, me too. The, in front of people. It's like it's the most alien weird thing. It's I like to have terrible. the drummer there and the me bass too. there. But but in a live mix, to, like the widest you should go generally with guitars is like ten and two, I think, and stuff because it's like then you're not cutting off half. The, it's a different thing, live. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Okay. Gotcha. Totally. I think because that's but what I do with vocals. For example, when I do when I do record vocals, and I yeah. I am a big big sucker for giant vocal arrangements. That's why I'm a right. Queen fan. I love Extreme. I love King's X stuff like that. Like yeah, do as many vocals as you can, and I love that. And yeah. when I when I pan vocals left right, I have the main vocals literally three tracks, one yeah. is centered, and then slightly panned left yes. right just to like yes. have a support underneath, but just yes. like really low in the volume. And then all the harmonies would go like 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. And the real what I what I figured out is like when you do record, actually I can do that. If you record something like that, something like really low, like, yeah, yeah. But if you record vocal sounds more than singing, like, yeah. and that is panned left, right, super hard. That's uh, awesome. That really comes like it's it's crushing your skull when you hear it. <laughs> so, yeah, because like, it's so wide and it's just have, it's I, have I showed you have I showed you my track testicles? <laughs> I don't think so, because I would remember that one. <laughs> okay, I, I got to send you a link, because I wrote one song called Testicles, and that is pretty much a song that has all kinds of, like, vocal style techniques in it. So from oh, okay. ah, okay. fry screaming to, like, singing, opera, and everything. So I got I, I, I to show it here. Inspired by Devin Townsend. I got to, I got to, oh, okay, cool. I got to check that out. I do, by the way, I do the same thing with the <laughs> guitar, like the split thing and yeah. the, uh, like up the middle, but sometimes like you'll have a guitar and then an answer solo comes in and then a different part with a different tone. Yeah, but that's that, different. The, right here. You know, totally. No, but back. I talk about the, the solid rhythm, like, right. That, that panning so solid rhythm that is there, not the like, right. that's different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Here's a, uh, a super chat for you both. What's a guitar awakening moment you both had? Could be a technical thing or a touch thing. Like, you mean like the light bulb comes on? You're like, oh, I don't know. Um, for me, I don't even know. <laughs> Probably. I mean, one of them I, was... Okay, here, oh, here's, here's my one. Like, yeah. um, I just did this video about changing strings on a Floyd Rose guitar. Uh -huh. Like, when you have a Floyd. Yeah. And I I heard people talk about like a Floyd has weight, you know, oh, this guitar has Floyd. In. A Floyd is like this massive amount of like metal, which yeah. weighs a lot. And I never really thought of it that way. I always thought like, well, that's the thing just sitting there holding yeah. the strings. Right. But um, I realized when I when I played and I tuned it while sitting, um, yeah. it's a whole different ballgame when you take a tuned Floyd Rose guitar and you play it and you just turn it it oh. changes like the tuning and uh -huh. i that was something where i'm like wow okay that thing is really heavy i mean that's the neck too and everything on certain guitars when you dump it it'll when not on know. my ibanez guitars it's not the neck it's just the heavy true voice. true true <laughs> i'll tell you this i had a tech this is kind of funny i had a tech once and he was a big guy he was mm -hmm. a big guy really big okay. and he when he would tune my guitar, I was trying to figure out why when he handed me guitars, they would always be flat. 
Literally. Oh no, he tuned it while lying down. I know. No, he tuned it like like it would sit on because he had a big belly and it would literally oh sit on his belly. God. Like so the guitar was at an angle when he had it because he was also tall and so he was a really big guy and he would have it on a strap with the guitar lying at maybe 40 degrees or 35 degrees or something, right? When he's tuning it. Then he hands it to me and it's straight. And that's oh my flat. goodness. I swear to God. And you'll find it on on uh guitars that flex like Gibson's, you know, if it's mahogany neck, it tends to move a little more. It's like a little more. Whatever. Seen this one? Ooh, what's that thing? You got a fretless situation going there. What the heck is going on with that? <laughs> this is uh actually that's not my guitar. That's it that French to... company. Is that Ron Thal? Belongs... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's it's Ron's guitar. So <laughs> is it? I just happen to have it here. <laughs> but it's Ron's guitar. And this is one of the most well thought through instruments I've seen in a long time. I should probably not advertise this because I'm still with Abinus, but this guitar yeah. is fantastic. It's like so wow. well thought through. French company, and right? Yes, Vigier. Vigier. Uh, Vigier. Uh, baguette. Uh, uh, Vigier. The, 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 the thumbbell, and uh, this is very nice. Anyway, sorry. Yes. Yeah. So what's your breakthrough uh, awakening moment, Pete? Um, could be a technical thing or could be a touch thing. You know, for me, it was like real, like I used to make, all guitars try and sort of feel the same like because i liked a certain thing this fret size this neck and i had a hard time going from guitar to guitar to guitar and then i realized that they're all like snowflakes and that's kind of the point is like going from like i got it took me years to get comfortable on playing a gibson style guitar because i had come from you know 25 and a half scale an arm contour like just the arm contour and then i pick i get up my first last paul and it was like i cut myself I'm not even like my arm was bleeding. <laughs> That's <big>. me. <laughs> I'm like hammering it into the the binding. And you have the blue spot, the bruise here. <laughs> yeah, mine was literally bleeding. Like my tech came out with a towel and was like, I was like, this is above, <laughs> you know. I promise I don't have anything. I'm like safe, you know. It was like literally yeah. like when I first was playing Les Pauls, that was the thing I had to figure out how to get around and how and the bridge was like higher off the body, the tunamanic, and that was really uncomfortable. And then I just realized like this is part of the beauty of it. It's like you know the. Don't try and like you need to learn how to get comfortable with a different neck shape, different width, different, you know, a, a tremolo, no tremolo. Like that's the beauty of all these different guitars, you know, is they're yeah, all I will not. They're like you well, <laughs> so you play a guitar that's a an Ibanez. I mean, they're set up for comfort and for right. I am I, mean, I am a total RG fa shape fan. Like the yeah. RG shape of Ibanez is just my shape. I, I take those guitars and I'm like Mwah. it it merges <laughs> my body with the guitars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, and, <laughs> yes, um, I, love it. I I do have a uh, Epiphone SG though. Yeah, Epiphone. Sadly enough, well, anyway, um, but the thing is, I I heard somebody say once, either you play Epiphone, well, not Epiphone, you play SGs or you play all the other guitars. Yeah, yeah, because it's kind of over kind here. of exactly. I kind yeah, of yeah. agree, and I never thought yeah. about that, but then I was like, huh, you're right. <laughs> it's like weird. Yeah. It and, is kind of uh, it's, it's an interesting and SG sits a Firebird's even worse. They're like oh yeah 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 totally. You feel yes. like your arm is over here, like you're playing an mm -hmm. F chord on a Firebird. You're like oh, it's over here. It's like huh? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Very uncomfortable for me. But yes. so so did you play an SG in the ACDC tribute? Sometimes I I must say yeah. I, we we've been a little bit different. We we didn't like originally play to like blast our Marshalls as loud as we can, so we get the gain and distortion like ACDC originally did yeah. do. Yeah. Um, we've been like playing and and celebrating their music, but like with our own kind of style. So I played my angle full okay. back in the days, and I played my Ibanez, and but yeah. still had the the tie and the backpack and the you know little school outfit, and it's That's so awesome. sexy. <laughs> 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 but it was a good it was a good bunch of years where I was um, learning. Yeah. Learning, you know, learning how to deal with the business, learning how to deal with promoters, learning how to deal with everything. That was my. Yeah. Get, get, getting started, I get it, yeah, learn, I'm, yeah. Every, everything's a learning process. Right. So how totally. oh, when did you get your first RG like Ibanez? Well, I, the first Ibanez that I ever bought was um, my S470 DX and I still have it. Like okay. so one of the Sabre ones Um, that was when I was. Ha, 17 years old, I think. 
Saber, and yeah. but then I we played with that ACDC tribute band. We played in a giant German metal festival called Wacken, huh. and Yamaha approached me, and they gave me the the old Yamaha uh, SGs. You know, the shape oh, from yeah, the yeah. top like a, like a Les Paul, but shaped from the front like an SG. Like, like those kind of exactly yeah. the color Santana ones. And um, so I played those for a couple of years, and <laughs> actually, <laughs> they are heavy. They are Les Paul yeah. heavy. Yeah. And I didn't have it in me yet. Like you can't do the Angus Young jump around like that's cardio workout on stage. And you yeah. can't do that with a heavy guitar. Yeah. So I went to my friend uh, of um, Ziggy Brown, who does fine young guitars. He's like a custom shop guitar builder. And I yeah. said, Ziggy, I need I need help. Like help me with this guitar. It was a beautiful um uh, Yamaha SG 3000 and he just literally cut out a whole chunk of wood to make it lighter okay yeah and so I was like oh this is amazing it's light now so I <laughs> walked on stage and what did happen I'm like oh, oh, oh. feedback and I'm like Fudge, like oh. the, what am I gonna do now? What am I? And it was literally right before the show. <laughs> I oh. walked backstage and I, I was talking to my band back in the days, and I said, "Okay, girls, give me your socks." <laughs> <laughs> so you I had nothing it. else. So I just st like stuffed all the socks into that guitar. Yeah, closed it up, and it worked. Yeah. So it closed the the hole in the guitar, and so I could play the show. And uh, when I um when Were I socks dirty? when I <laughs> well here's the here's the thing though when i when i um joined ibanez like after quite some years yeah. i was like yeah you can have those guitars back so yeah. somewhere at the, <laughs> yamaha somewhere the at, the, at the yamaha headquarter there's a guitar with dirty socks in it <laughs> dirty socks in a big hole oh they're so, like, oh yeah. thanks uh what yeah. happened to this yeah. the smelly one is mine <laughs> 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 I love oh it. Oh my god. <laughs> These are the things you learn on the road that you can't teach. Yeah, like exactly. Like, no, it, you gotta, your you gotta little explain. two watt amp is not doing that in your bedroom. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you get the 335 yep. on stage, it goes <laughs> You're like, exactly. what do I do? And you gotta find give me your socks. Yeah, I've stuffed all kinds of stuff in the uh the sound holes of semi-acoustic guitars, but it's cool. It's yeah. rock and roll. That's what you totally do. totally um <laughs> Ibanez. So on that note, so you, so you've been with Ibanez a long time. You, you're probably going to, to Guitar Summit, right? Or are you in uh, Manhattan? The, the, to be honest, not really. Oh, you're not going to go. I am actually the next thing on my list, and I know my dear friend Travis Larson is listening right now because he's watching. Oh, cool. Um, I'm gonna join him and his band, the Travis Larson band. They're gonna be on tour. Mm. It's this fantastic trio, and they do. They just have a new album out there called The New Exhibit. Okay. We're going to tour on that throughout the whole U.S. So go check out TravisLarsonBand.com. And uh, I'm going to join them for a couple of shows on the East Coast, actually, in October, oh, the beginning of October. And we are not really sure yet what to play together, but I'm sure we're going to come up with something fun. And, that's so cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah. that's that's going to happen in the beginning of October. That's the next thing on my, on my menu. <laughs> okay. I asked about Summit just because um, I – saw you there last year it was last year right and yeah and um uh, there's a lot of that was not folks. last year i think it was was it i think it was really yeah 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 pretty sure i mean because there wasn't one the year before so that was last year okay all right i know it's weird it seems like longer it seems or like ages ago <laughs> i know i think it was just a year ago um wow and okay. uh but but uh, what was I going to say about it? Oh, yeah, there's lots of Ibanez folks going. So I thought maybe you were I, like, I know Yvette's going and uh, Laurie's going to be there. There's going to be. Oh, Laurie's fantastic. I love her. My God, yeah. she's such a tasteful player. Like, yeah, she's fantastic. She's yeah, it's her phrasing. So good. And everything. She came yes. in here and did a uh, back when we released the PT15 amp, which is sitting right here. I'm looking at it. I don't know why, but um, she came <laughs> in and did a solo, which was so kind of her uh on the like official release video you know i had oh, her on the track so nice. and she did yeah. a guest solo and she came Amazing. in and sat down and i set up a track got a tone and she's like okay cool and i'm like um okay well let's just see what happens and i hit record and she played a solo and it was like that was it first That's take so good yeah that yeah, girl is take. so talented she has such a beautiful understanding of phrasing and music and tone it's yeah. like i i love her music yes 
she's yeah, amazing. she's so she's she's really terrific and is, uh, you know super sweet and super yep. great player with all the right uh yeah for sure you know I just was knocked out by that show. I mean we tried I was like well that was really good let's let's you want to try again and she was like yeah and we did like three or four more and I go you know it's the first the one. first one that's yeah. it <laughs> first take <laughs> yeah. nailed it really really good guitar player nice um. Music Life with Arthur here says, can you ask Jen to plug in Ron's guitar? She probably, I bet you're probably not dialed in to do that right now, right? That's my guess. I but really, I'm just on. so, I, I'm, I'm curious about the fretless neck. But Oh, uh, you just want to want to watch me suck on that, like, well, I just, because I can't play it. <laughs> no, well, who can? <laughs> you okay, know, don't feel like, you know, I'm. it's such a curious oh, thing. Oh, don't God. feel like you have to, uh, but if you will, that's fantastic. Now, wait, too. I'm using my incredible clots. Joe Bonamassa cable. Hey. Oh. You know what interesting thing about the Joe Bonamassa cloth cables? What's that? So what I realized when I use these cables is like when you plug them in, it's really hard to like plug them out again. Interesting. So I asked the clots guys, I'm like, what is it with this cable? Because they have all kinds of like different models, right? The clots cables yeah. come like with Rockmaster tone, whatever. And this one is just so hard plug out and then i asked them and they were like yes you're right because joe bonamassa uses all these like old vintage guitarists mm. so he made these like jacks a little bit thicker so okay. they plug in and have a better sit in those vintage guitars that's so i so thought that was interesting and i was like that's totally the reason okay i've Let's never see. heard of that and that completely makes sense that because yeah the over time the old output jacks they get tired and oh, you know God, this is gonna be terrible so. i just like me, okay, the older I get, I get tired. Uh, okay. There's nothing coming out. Hello? Oh, well, you guys, take your time. No worries. Oh, it's going to be is. a terrible sound, but That's I... okay. So, okay. The fretless, is it, right? It's just cool. so freaking crazy to play on this thing. And I, I recently started learning, like, I wanted to play, like, a... It sounds good. A, oh, God, I'm a guitar player without a guitar pick. <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time. I never have one. No, no, no. I do have one. Hang on. I'm sorry. Oh, Thank yeah. you, by the way. Music Life with Arthur. Oh, Arthur, it's you. Okay. Okay, so I started recently, like, with the... I came up with the stupid idea to start practicing wait hang on it's terrible <laughs> wrong on the tune <laughs> i love it it's so hard to play this guitar that's and pretty chords damn are, good, man. I mean, chords like, are pretty much impossible. Yeah. But, well. It's so hard. I mean, the, the, <laughs> Sounds good. The, the fretless is hard. This one is like... It's possible. Yeah. So that's nice, but the fretless thing is just yeah. And you you get in, inspired by this instrument in in when you play it, because what you would do on a on a on a fretted guitar is like right. You would sure. bend sure. See how this goes. <laughs> Yeah, no banding. Yeah, right, right. Nothing so abandoned. you have to play different. And so in terms of yeah. like a fretless. You would always play the slides. And that's different. That actually inspires your playing a little bit. So. Yeah. 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 Well, it's like a violin. Okay. It's just. I started on violin, so. You did? I, I, I played the, the violin yeah. too. Oh, really? Oh, well, then it's similar, right? That's it. <laughs> it was awesome. Thank you for that. That oh, was God. pretty. Uh, 
And now my career is ruined. No, that was pretty ballsy. It's like, hey, can you play that guitar with no frets? Just uh, on the live yeah. stream off the top of your head, do something, you know? That's Sweating like, my ass off. Ooh. Yeah, no, I would be scared. Uh, I, I was. <laughs> how we end, does anybody give September 17th, correct? Hey, Metalhead Hippie, hi. Good to see you here. Mm. Is that right? September yes. uh, 17th? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to start promoting the whole uh, Does Anybody Give? That's the new single. That's the third mm -hmm. up and coming single of How We End. And we're going to release it on September 17th. Awesome. And uh, we're going to start promoting it on, I think, the 12th, like five days before that. Now, that and is metal. That is metal, right? I mean, that I is it's pretty more, much metal. Pretty much metal. For, for my personal taste, it's like pop metal. Okay. Modern pop metal because we have two singers. We have like a, we I like to call her the screaming paella, diva satanica from Spain. She used to sing in uh, Nervosa. Okay. And she's like the right. part. Right. And right. then we have uh, Jake E from Ex Amaranth and Syra, and he's from Sweden and he's the uh, clean vocalist. Jake is a fantastic vocalist. And and so those two together are singing. And uh, this video that we're gonna put out there has been the crowdfunding thing oh. so people were we had crowdfunders in the video we had supporters oh, and it's it's really did you do it in uh, sweden or germany or in uh... germany we recorded in, it in germany and it's a whole story with avatars and it's like i, I can't i can't say too much about it but okay. it's it's, yeah. it's a fun video and, awesome. you know, I never like to be another sheep in the herd. So when we thought about doing the third single and the second video of this whole Hawaiian thing, I said, well, if everybody goes to like, hey, you have to shorten your songs, song maximum length is like, what, 245 now? It's ridiculous. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. I said, well, let's let's do it like thriller like michael jackson back in the days let's make a whole long video with a whole long intro and stuff and yeah. so we did that and uh yeah oh my god that's gonna be cool it's i love it yeah. artistic uh serrano says uh what was the acdc tribute band members who else did you play in that band with well nobody famously known as somebody it's not like like it's not like the Iron Maidens with all these star players like uh -huh. Nikki Stringfield and Courtney Cox and Nita Strauss. It was just a bunch of like me and friends, girls playing. So that's yeah. cool. Uh, ben Tom says hashtag dirty socks acts. Yeah, man. <laughs> <That's the MO. laughs> awesome. I wonder when one day somebody's going to discover this little secret in that guitar at Yamaha. I, I don't know where the guitar is right now, but. Yeah, it probably still exists somewhere. Oh, hi, Val. Uh, question, what's a uh, useful guitar hack while being on tour that you've learned? I've got one. Having no guitar at free guitar camp for the clinic. What an experience. <laughs> Do you remember oh, that? Oh, Val. <laughs> yeah, she was with me. I took her with me to Matthias E. Eklund's oh. free guitar camp. She's she's Valeria. For those of you who don't know, she's the admin of my Gemadro Chile oh, cool. club, and um, she's a fabulous guitar player herself. And uh, yeah, awesome. we went to Sweden, and I traveled there. And uh, when I booked the flight with only carry-on luggage, the day after, of course, Matthias was like, "Hey, can you do a clinic?" And I'm like, "Uh, uh. <laughs> I won't have a guitar." And he's like, "Well, you." can have my guitar but the problem is matthias plays comparison guitars and he has mm. like an eight string guitar oh. with true temperament frets and i'm like oh no <laughs> so that's, that's like not what you just did you really, it's like do no. a clinic here's a fret list do a exactly clinic. An eight it's like terrible yeah. so oh. i was like well i'm i'm just sitting there and i'm gonna ask all the attendees of the free guitar camp yeah. who has a guitar who has a Ibanez, who has a Floyd guitar, because most of my songs of my solo stuff are Floyd-based. Like, I could play them without a Floyd, but it would take a lot of the... the yeah. nom, 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 away. So, um, yeah. Show me that so, again. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> <laughs> so, I use the I used the guitars of some of the guitar camper attendees, like, there. It was right. interesting. <laughs> and it was a challenge, honestly. Like, yeah, I talked cool. to Matthias afterwards, and it's, like, something if you if you if you if you decide to on the spot play 
a stranger's guitar. Right. Then you realize like so fast <laughs> what you pay attention to on your very own instrument. It's like the action. It comes to like how high are the pickups? Uh, how do the like the knobs feel like sh easy stuff like that? But I was yeah. like, mm, that's awkward. Yeah. <laughs> but simply just because it wasn't my guitar, like super high action. I'm like, ah, yeah, I didn't yeah. have my action solo like like Herman Lee is the guy with the lowest guitar action I know. Oh. It's it's low, but it's not that low. But then, for example, you you miss out of a sudden. You, you're like, this is a good guitar, but it ha it's it, it it has a it has a lack of gain because the pickups are like too low, and right. that's not because the person wants it that way. It's just because the person doesn't know better, right? <laughs> but you don't you don't have time to adjust all that when you just hey, grab dummy, the guitar and like, your pickups. Okay, I'm playing now, and you're just battling through that and. Right. It was interesting. It was definitely interesting. so. There's a cool uh, video of uh, Joe Satriani uh, taking uh, a fan's guitar, and it was kind of like a Strat copy with single coils and stuff. And he plays all of um, uh, Satch Boogie on it, like through a little okay. practice amp. And he just plays the whole thing, like verbatim on this guy. And it's like that's pretty impressive. Like a guy's like hands on the guitar, and he's like, wow. He just yeah, and he rips it out of that. And it was like you you could tell it was like a two hundred dollar guitar, and it's like wow, it, major it really respect. Does, it's it's it. <laughs> It's it's definitely shocking and definitely like a, uh, a check. I kind of like that challenge. I remember going to Michael. T There's a video um, that I did with Tim Pierce where we went to Michael Thompson's studio, one of the Tim and Pete yeah. show videos. And Michael goes, here, I, ju I just thought, you know, we could set up this track here in Pro Tools and then I'll hand the guitar to you guys and you guys just play the first thing. They just take a solo, you know, and I'm like, I'm sitting here with two of the greatest session players, you know, from the 80s and 90s, Michael and and uh, and and Tim. And I'm like, oh, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he hands me the guitar and the accent's like a slide guitar and that's what he likes you know? oh but fuck. It was fun. i did okay you can watch the video and hear the solos you know and the three of us all do a take it's all first take we all just tim played beautifully michael played beautifully i didn't choke i did okay you know and it was right. like um but it was neat because it was like heavier strings really high action and i just had to play what i could play with that like you know, the different yeah. approach Okay. Exactly. Kind of like you say on the fretless, like, what do you do? You do something different. You yeah, know? yeah, so yeah. This is yeah, you. Yeah, you guess. immediately when you when you're like an experienced player, you adjust to whatever you have to work with, right? Right. Yeah. And, it's, and you it, make the sound. It's out interesting. Of it. It, it and it it, it yeah. just shows you how much you are paying attention to certain things with your own devices yes. when you work with your own guitars. It's it's yeah, just, when you're out of yeah, your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. I remember totally. I remember playing with Jewel and she um I did a tour with her in 2006 and she was uh, I never forgot this that she was talking about her voice and how as a singer, you know, as a singer, mm -hmm. it's a uh, uh, sometimes stressful on tour if you feel like you're a little under the weather or didn't get enough sleep right. or there's all these other yeah. considerations with voice and she said I just approach it like, well, there's going to be something there tonight. I don't know what it's going to be, but like, let's see where it'll go and just have fun with it. And not. I tell you, I tell you one thing. That's totally me. There are two different types of musicians. For example, my friend Travis Larson that I just mentioned. Yeah. He is the total over preparer. Uh -huh. Like he has to have everything rehearsed and be prepared and like, yeah. you know. And it's I'm the opposite. I love to just go out there and just see what happens yeah, yeah, yeah i love yeah. that because that tickles yeah. my my creativity that tickles me as a musician yeah and i love what sometimes i am able and capable of producing and putting out there yes. because i am not prepared you know yeah yeah, and I, yeah. I like that i like the yeah spontaneous it's... tickle of like go let's go <laughs> yeah it's like what are you gonna do it's your yeah. exactly <laughs> I remember doing Guitar Summit and jamming with uh, t with uh, Thomas. It was the year before, mm -hmm. or the last one before the one when I saw you there. Mm -hmm. And he has that jam every year. This is his guitar show in Germany. And I had to play with Paul Gilbert and Billy Sheehan. And oh I think Chris God. Buck was up there. And, like, oh, Chris all these, and Thomas, all these great players, you know. And I was like, I knew I was going to have to take a solo. It's like, what am I going to do? And we were jamming on a kind of like slow, bluesy kind of Hendrix. I don't even remember what song it was. Um, but I thought... Might have even been Little Wing or something, but I thought, what am I gonna of do? Of course, like, Little I'm up Wing. Here on... What's that? Of course, Little Wing. I yeah, it might have been Little song. Wing. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know, I know. It's the it's the standards that we do, and you uh, know, yeah. you're that thing. Yes. Something everybody knows. But <clears throat> I just kind of went, David Gilmore. What would David Gilmore do? That's what you're gonna do, you know? Because I'm not gonna out okay. Paul Gilbert, Paul Gilbert, or something. Nobody's going. It's to. like, what? Is, what the hell are you playing then? <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go slow. I dial up a Univibe sound really fast in a long delay. And I just oh, went, nice. I went super the other way. <laughs> and just was Perfect. Like, but that's what you do. Yeah. That right? was totally off the cuff. And nice. Kind of, nice. Yeah. It was like it, the, uh, but it's fun. I love those challenges too. I totally right? agree. I'm just yeah. looking through some of the comments here and uh, the, uh, oh, wow. I'm far back in the chat. This is great. We still got, we got 390 people online. It's awesome. Really? It's really Hi. fun. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been good. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Ben Tom says he's only played fretless on violin. Yeah. I mean, I've never played a fretless guitar. That's Never, that's... ever? Never played a fretless guitar. I started on wow. violin. Did you start on violin or did you pick it up later? No, I started out at the at the age of four. I started out with piano. Oh. Then realized that piano forces me to pretty much sit down on my butt, and I didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> then I moved on to electric guitar at the age of six, and my yeah. dad was like, "Oh no, my child wants to play electric guitar." Right, and right. Then I'd say in the in the years between, pretty much six to ten was all guitar that's okay. like guitar like obsessed with guitar obsessed with steve Vai at the age of eight and everybody uh, was oh, listening really? to everybody <laughs> stuff like that and i was like Wee, blah, blah, blah. so yeah I was, that's the tour yeah. i'm going on soon by the way <laughs> i'm doing a nick carter tour that's uh, so i'm <laughs> oh playing with him really i'm playing those songs yeah it is oh my fun. god <laughs> i'm gonna tell you it's fun the music is fun 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 and there's gonna be a lot of great covers and fun stuff in the show it's gonna be oh, a cool neat show so yeah it's really fun but That's yeah cool i learned cool that too awesome. <laughs> yeah come on i got that down man it's, yeah I, I i liked it back in the days but i was never Heck like yeah. a yeah whatever so they've listened to that i have listened to steve and uh, Nuno and uh scott henderson and ellen holdsworth and greg yeah. howe and all these kind of guys you know michael landau and yeah, Michael. Yeah. Oh God, I'm glad you brought so, up yeah. Mike. Mike is so Mike good. Is, he's my. I know. Uh, one. I know. I saw yeah. him uh, live at when I went to Nam one year, and I I saw him play with um. Uh, it was Michael Landau and the fuck Jen. <laughs> <laughs> My brain doesn't work. Steve Gadd, sorry. Oh, Steve Gadd. Was that Steve a big Gadd. It was, it was, it was amazing. And and Dave Recker was in the audience. And it was just like, oh my god, it was so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, so um, what was the question? No, I didn't start with uh violin. So that was piano. Then I started guitar. And between the age of six and ten, it was only guitar. And then uh, there was bass, of course, because we guitar players always play kind of like kind of like bass well and you were in bands playing bass as your primary right like... band singular band, band. Singular. <laughs> yeah that's what enough was that experience for like? a left hand uh, uh, did, was did a, you like playing bass no no <laughs> no <laughs> no the, i mean I, let me tell you the thing is i i have this favorite festival of mine that where we played the how we end um first show it's called mm -hmm. rock hearts and uh, back in the days, I had these two bands. I played guitar and I played bass in another band. And I was playing one band on Friday. I think it was bass first or yeah. guitar first. I don't know. And the Saturday show was headlining with the other band. Yeah. And that weekend, I realized, like, as a guitar player, you listen to music so differently. Like, what processes in your head is different sure. than a bass player. Right. right. And... Uh, I'm not a bass player. I'm That's just I totally understand. It's a completely different mental process for sure. <laughs> totally. Um, I sort of have a dream of doing a tour, at least on bass. Like I would love to get a gig on and like my my four and I mean like four string P bass SVT. I've got a tuner. That's it. That's my dream right there. Oh, that's the dream. Yeah. And I'm like looking around. I'm like making this just as much money as that guy standing over there. He's got a big pedal board. Like, and he had to learn six parts and somehow form them into he one part. Like, doo, doo, He's like, doo, 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 yeah. And I'm just, and I'm like, my paycheck is the same. I must say, I must say, one of the one of the first tours that I've ever done in Europe was with TM Stevens back in the days. Uh huh. That was when I was, I don't know, seventeen, right, eighteen years old. That was one of my first tours, like not tour, tour, but a couple of shows, you know, when you travel from show to show in a van. And and That's I did that with TM and uh, that was pretty, pretty taught me a lot. Yeah. Taught me a whole lot how to 
like be on a stage, how to like feel comfortable on a stage and stuff like that. I learned a lot of little things from him. Anything how to... in particular that you remember? Like it's the... just uh, what I really loved about him back in the days was the way he caught the audience's attention and the way he interact with audience. Like you can get any audience to interact with you if you got the chops to like just sorry i'm saying that again like grab them by the balls <laughs> yeah just, yeah yeah it's just and he really did that so well he's like with this whole funk stuff and it's like amazing so i think he used to be used to be one of yeah. a hell of a bass player and nowadays yeah. honestly one of the greatest bass players in my opinion is henrik linder Oh, Henry's he was amazing. wait. He was there at the guitar summit too yeah, when yeah. you were there, right? Yeah, yeah. I met him. I love yeah. that guy. Yeah, he was yeah. a sweetheart. Both of you, like, were that was the first time we'd actually kind of hung and met and stuff. Yeah. And, and that's why I love that thing. It was great. Yeah, I've <laughs> met so many cool people there, um, <laughs> and had fun. And yeah, he was great. That dude is yeah. cool. Yeah. He's a bass player that plays with um, Dirty Loops. Dirty Loops. That's it. He's and, fantastic. But he's so brilliant and kind of funny. And um, you, you should know. get him on the show. I would love that. I mean. I'll connect you. It's funny. I primarily have only had, yes, yeah, connect me. I, I, I primarily, blah, 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 primarily have only had guitarists on the show because I just feel like it's such a guitar and gear centric. And I tell you honestly, man, but, Henrik was but, at the free guitar camp in Sweden, right? And yeah. I remember Matthias, he was like, I was trying to get a hold of Henrik forever. And yeah. I said, why don't you ask me? <laughs> I'm texting right, right. with him almost every day. And I'm like, why don't you ask me? So, yeah. Within 20 minutes, it was like, okay, done. He's going to be awesome. at the camp. And yeah. he was so nervous. He texted me before his clinic. He was on the train and he was like, ah, Jen, I don't know. This is a guitar clinic. What if nobody has a question? I, I don't know. I'm a bass player. I, I'm really nervous. Right. So I did my clinic right before he arrived. And I said, guys, everybody here, all you 50 players, listen. Henrik is really nervous about the fact that you don't have questions. Can everybody please prep a question? That was very him? nice of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but here's the thing what happened. So Henrik was like climbing the stage and the guru chair. And he's like, does anybody have a question? And the whole tent, everybody's like, yes, me. <laughs> <laughs> and he picked one guy and the guy was like, Chris, I, I it was just like fabulous. And he was like. Well, I don't want to ask the question that Jen suggested, but my question would be, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> now he knows. <laughs> he's a, he's a good guy. Yeah, this is true, uh, actually. Jason says I had Doug on, Doug from King's X. Uh, well, we did. Oh, nice. Yeah, he wasn't. I mean, technically, we did a, a, a video together on his pedal. But um, yeah, are you kidding? When they approached me, go, hey, would you do a thing with Doug on his pedal? And I'm like, are you oh, yeah. a King's X fan? So he came by the studio. He sent me a live take of jerry's drums playing dogman and oh, um, like a two track like a two bus mix of of the drums um and i set up a session and then there's two rhythm guitar parts on dogman so i i tracked one of them and then i he came in here and we set up his pedal and we played dogman together and i got to oh, play with so doug cool. with jerry oh. on drums yes so and cool. it was like this is amazing right now. I was like, this is <laughs> so, so cool. cool. <laughs> and I, I set up a mic for him to sing, but he didn't want to sing. And I was like, okay, okay that's cool. We're just so, no, that's you know, so we just played an instrumental, but nice. oh God, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And he was, he was, I loved interviewing him and talking to him. He's, you can check out the nice. video if you guys haven't seen it. Uh, Doug just turned 73. He just had a 73. Oh my God, really? A couple days ago. Yeah. I remember being at uh, Jerry Cantrell's birthday party a few years ago and Doug being there and saying, I'm going to turn 70 next year. And that seems like, yes, it's like one of those pandemic lost time things. Like, but he just turned yeah, 73. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah. It's crazy. And he looks amazing. He's like, you know, dude works yeah. out all the time and eats right. And he's like killing it at 73. Like, totally. yeah. If I just make it that long, I'll be happy. Let alone, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Todd says, Doug Pinnock is the coolest dude. He really is. He's so cool. He's so yes. cool. Love King's X. Love me some King's X. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I shouldn't even bring this up, but it's just a prototype, so I can bring it up. Uh, I'm a big Ty Tabor fan and his crazy guitar sound that he had, you know, back that he built back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I um he had one of those Fender Elite strats, which had so it was just run of the mill kind of Elnico two single coils, but it had that preamp in it that was the precursor to the Eric Clapton, you know, it's got a mid boost in the in Ooh, the strat. Okay. 
that's a big okay. part of Doug or, or of uh, excuse me of Ty's guitar sound is right. that elite strat with the boost in it. And so I said, uh, I asked John Sir the other day, I'm like, can you just build that preamp into a pedal? Like it's a, just an active. Oh, you know, into a pedal. Okay. Yeah, into a pedal. Like the the and he's like, I don't see why not. He's like, yeah, you could, and if you use like some similar single coils, and he actually knows the guy that designed the electronics in that guitar like originally so he hit okay. him up and he's like he's gonna make you one so he's actually making me a uh and i have a lab series l5 which is like the amp that tie you so i'm like so stoked to get this little pedal that's awesome like, boost it into the amp and see if i can get close to that sound because wow so that's that's cool. awesome yeah cool kind of fun because i love very it. exciting like, yeah so much fun like i still love this stuff but we'll, we'll see uh if that i think it's a big part of the sound uh what's going on here uh studios channel says gonna sound weird for some but uh <laughs> was it time to put poopy in bed okay okay this is michiel michiel studio yeah. Himiel, is um a friend of mine in belgium okay and he played the postman <laughs> In the upcoming How We End video. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just, okay. just so you know. Don't give away too yeah. much. We don't because we got to see the video. No, no, no. He's just a, there is a postman in our video, and Michiel okay. is the postman. Just so for all of you to know. I love that there's so many people that came over here from uh, from your <laughs> world to, to hang. That's awesome. That's awesome. Please come back next Sunday. I'll be here yep. at 11:45 a.m. Pacific time, loosely. Which is perfect. Which is right after my video. So the Sundays are like morning. It's going to be like Ola, then in the evening, 7 p.m. Central European time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time is my video premiere every Sunday. And then right after that, you can just like have a coffee or have some breakfast or eat some dinner. And then you can join Pete on his channel. That's well. perfect. So you're, you're going to do it every Sunday. That's awesome. Yes. Is yes, it going to be a, a live, live stream or is it going to be? No, a I can't. I can't live stream. But okay. that's up to you all professionals. Like, I, I, I don't know how to do that shit. I think so. you're pretty good at it. <laughs> You've been doing I'm it just, for two hours. <laughs> I'm like, really? Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just going to prep some some footage. And, you know, whenever you have when you have suggestions, everybody, please comment on underneath the first episode of my video that just premiered on my channel. Because, yeah. I think it's it's really it's it's really a thing. You know, you have so many channels where people are like coming at you with so much knowledge already, like basic knowledge. Yeah. And then they go like, well, let me show you how to shred. Let me show you how to do arpeggios. Let me show you how to sweep. But the thing is like the, the little things that build that I like to compare a lot of things to food. So the dough of the cake might yeah. be a little bit not solid, right? right? So I'm like making the dough of the cake. The basic. And exactly it's it's the dough of the cake and then everybody else can build the you know the cake and cream and cherry on top and shit like that and sprinkles and stuff but i would like to provide the dough of the cake that's a great you should call the series the dough of the dough cake, of the cake. <laughs> chen madura i love it um, no it's seriously that maybe you should actually it's a great uh video title where you're like this is what we're going to do here you know and the dough example, of the cake yeah um what's what is the series called again sorry it's going to be called... uh, I, i'm not sure if i'm going to stick with this name guitar stuff with jim Majura. wait let me say that in cool guitar stuff with jim Majura. <laughs> guitar it's like ladies and gentlemen please welcome <laughs> guitar stuff with jim yeah, so i don't know i don't know yet we'll we'll see we'll see I, just started. Uh, I think that's a terrific idea. And I, uh, you know what I'll do is I'll get the link to this first video that you've done. I'll put it in the video description below. Oh, thank video you. So, so people can, you know, link from this video and check out the first one. Thank cetera, you. Et cetera. Go subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, what's to say? Starting a fund to make Jen do another seven hour. No. They, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, Michiel. This is not going to happen. Here's what happened. Um, HP, you know, Sexy. HP, right? HP, HP 42. My friend, oh, Henny, uh, you're talking about um, um... the bald guy, you know, you know who I mean, right? <laughs> yeah. The bald guy, the funny with the funny German accent, right? Why am I spacing on his name right now? I know him Henning. really well. His name so. is Henning. Henning. Of course. Henning, Henning yeah. Pauli. No, no Henning, yeah. And so Henning, one day we're friends, you know, and one day he yeah. sends me like a text and he's like, hey, would you like to do like a live stream thing? And just, I just wanted to go visit him. 
Yeah. Just say hi, hang out a little bit, just, you know. At his studio? Yeah. Right. And he said, well, if you're going to come visit, like, why not? Let's do a live stream, like writing a song or something. I'm like, right. Sure. This motherfucker turned this whole thing into like a seven hour 4K live stream with, I don't know, 20,000 cameras. And of course he did because oh, he's hitting. Yeah. Oh my God. I was, I slept for three days after that. I was so <laughs> exhausted. It was, the, it was the worst life thing I've ever done in my entire life. And then it was, it was midnight and he's like, and now sing and do the harmonies. And it was like, I can't anymore. I was so exhausted. It was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. That so, sounds like yeah, and. Uh, yeah. There is a bunch of people that are pushing this, like Michiel right now with a five euro super chat I see that are voting for another seven hour live stream. Not gonna happen. Not uh you know, uh I know like Dead Mouse used to do these like live stream of like his creative process and kind of like he might work on a song for like seven hours and then go this sucks and just erase it like, like <laughs> and you would, you'd be there watching the whole but it's kind of cool it's like if you approach it like you're gonna get the real deal i'm gonna forget you're even here I, and i'm just gonna do my thing kind of interesting like i get that. it and yeah. i get it that i get that it's like the 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 watching part of like peeking into the process of what's going on inside of your brain when you write. I get that. And there's not a lot of musicians who allow people to look yeah. into their brains. So I get that. Yeah. But as a point of like, you you know, you, you always have like this, you know, this kind of like behavior sure. in front of a camera. I'm sure. like, sure. if I would be like just all by myself right now, I would be on the couch chilling with my, you know, chips. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well you know what i mean so Chips. doing this like hello yeah. for seven hours it was just like so exhausting it's so hard. yeah no that's it takes a different kind of like what was that movie the circle with uh tom hanks and it was all about kind of like an apple like you know come like in the future where it's like this not even like that far in the future like five years from now and it's like everybody's sharing everything and constantly live streaming their entire life and it was creepy yeah, yeah. It was creepy yeah I, I like it being a uh a defined thing that i can sit in this chair and do for a couple hours exactly pete see it's it's nice that you yeah. and i talk and nobody watches <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully, <laughs> there's people here. Uh, Three seventy six right now. We still got. Uh, don't out there. remind me that people are watching. <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's just you and I. <laughs> it's true. I, I I sometimes forget, and then I hope I, I'm like I'm not going to say anything stupid today, but I probably do every <laughs> week. I mean, I certainly do every week. It absolutely happens. But for some reason, uh, people keep coming back. So. <laughs> yeah, they like you. I, I I don't know. People like me. Damn it. <laughs> It's fun. We have fun here. It's good. I I would I so look forward to doing this every week, and we're pro we're probably getting close to the end here. We should wind it up soon. But um, I so look forward to this, and I appreciate all the people. There's so many people here, like right here, Bent, Tom, Ian. I'm seeing all the people. Surf. I still don't know how to say this. Surfer B. Sur Surfer B. Here every week, Preston. Here every week. Oh, Preston! Hey, Preston Tom, is here. the reason why I'm here. So, Preston, thank you so so much. That's so cool. Love you. See, my knees hurt. Here all the time. <laughs> sits, sits, sits most of the day. Sit or lay in bed. That's okay. Uh, Ryan's here. Ryan's always. Let's give some. Uh, hi, Ryan. I, barge. I don't know how to say this one either. I barge. I barge. But, uh, ben, of course, my uh, my my faithful moderator. He's up there in don't Canada. Ben does a Sunday show as well. Folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. He's he's on this. Uh, ben, are you on tonight? You've got your uh, Canadian. Uh, Guitars with Canucks situations, right? Happening tonight, I think. So, Fareed, Lauren, L. Scott Music, all you guys. Thank you for coming Scott, here every week. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Any last questions for Jen? Or we're get, we're going to go here pretty quick, I think. Yeah, I got to go to bed. I'm old. You know, I was thinking you were drinking. I was going to ask you. You're not old. If, if you're old, then what am I? Uh, you were drinking coffee earlier. Can you? Yeah. I, and, and then I went, wait a minute. When I went in the other room for a minute, I was like, wait a minute. It's like late there. Like, can you drink coffee and go to sleep? Well, it's now it's like close to 11 o'clock, but I, I am immune to coffee. I drink coffee all day long. Honestly. Even that, and then you can fall asleep and you're fine, huh? Yeah. I quit totally. by about 6 p.m. I'm done or else I won't be able to sleep right. Love it earlier in the day. Well, uh, well. Is this a serious question? Does Jen have big hands? 
<laughs> no. Have, no? Mine are like average. I don't I don't know. Like I've have, I've have average guitar hands, I feel like. I think you ever see oh. Paul Gilbert's got like these Oh my god, Paul Gilbert's hands are ridiculous. Yeah, he's got like, hand like the length of fingers just like Steve, like like a toilet yeah. seat. Like Yeah. So I'm sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Here's an interesting yeah. thing. Can you yeah. can you you see this little like oh yeah part of your finger, right? Yeah. And you have the same part of your finger in your in your uh I'm sorry my my fingers are blue, but here you've got the same yeah. part. So if yeah. you put these two these two together like yeah. with your pinkies and then yeah. put the same part together with your index fingers is one hand like one hand does it have longer fingers than the other? Because my left hand is longer than my right hand. Oh, really? See that? Yeah, a little bit. Right? I think mine's <laughs> identical. Is it? Yeah. Interesting. To me, identical. Yeah. Pretty much the same. Anyway, uh, so do I have big hands? I don't know. But I've got, like, I think slim fingers. Which is good for guitar. Blue fingers right now. I think. Spider fingers. That sounds like, you know, when you're trying to find names of... Uh, spider pig, spider pig. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. When you're trying to name uh, uh, instrumental guitar songs, spider fingers, mm -hmm. that's a name. That's a, that's a, that's a, it's good it's as pretty any good. Name. What was your, uh, you had a song on your last record called uh, Toby Didn't Make It to Breakfast or something? <laughs> Toby, didn't, Toby Didn't Show Up for Breakfast. <laughs> Toby Didn't Show Up for Breakfast, which yeah. is like a great name for an instrumental guitar song, I think. Which like, is honestly which... the truth because um, I have a friend called Toby and he lives in the next village. Um, yeah. And he's a guitar player, too. And we used to, back in the days, meet up every, I don't know, two months for breakfast and just, like, exchange the tattletale gossip shit in metal, yeah. right? Sure. And this one time, we had an appointment for breakfast, and I bought all this shit. I bought, like, bagels, cream cheese, salmon, lox, everything. Yeah. And the motherfucker forgot me and didn't show up. <laughs> so just I was so pissed, and I had so much food, and then I just... You know, started writing this song, and that's why I called it "Toby Didn't Show Up for Breakfast." So <laughs> that was what you did that day: is wrote that track. Yep. In honor of, you got all this Toby. extra cream cheese. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the bagels are gonna dry out. So people eat all these. Bagels. And it's the only it's the only instrumental track on my solo album, Insanity. So. Is it? Yeah. Was it the only? I didn't notice that. The, the rest, the rest vocals. is all with vocals, and I had like awesome guest players like Alex Skolnick, Jeff Waters, Matthias E. Eklund. Jeff's uh, solo on that one tune is like, jeez, it's sick. I know. Oh my God. And he was just like, "Oh, do you need it today? Because I'm not sure if I can nail it, and I don't have the time." And I'm like, "Come on." Yeah. And he just did that in like, I don't know, like five minutes, and he's like, "Okay, here you go." Seriously? Wow. Like, it's really like a ripping solo. I like know. I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. that was really good. I mean, you know? I must say but I they... love them all and they're all friends. I didn't do join like I, I didn't have them join my album because I wanted to name drop and yeah. be like, hey, look at me. It's literally these are friends. And I asked yeah. them to do this thing together with me because they're my friends. And one of the most mind blowing solos was Jan Seerfeld of Panzer Berlet. On the title track in Zenity. When he sent me that solo, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? I've got to go <laughs> check that one out. Because I, I, I got through a lot of the record yesterday and listened to it. And the, the standout. Uh, that, so I I must have not listened to that one. I'm going to give it a listen. <laughs> but I listened, to, I listened to Toby's song in honor of Toby. And Jeff's <laughs> solo is just like, oh, my God. So I'll go check. I'll go, yeah. Everybody go check out the record in Zenity, right? Yes. Like, uh, from 2017. Zenity. Right? Yes. Yeah. And are you like planning on doing another solo album soon at some point or i should right yeah I, that's the way i feel like yeah i should probably <laughs> yeah exactly and you know the thing is i have okay. a lot of parallel like stuff going because like, you put out your first album around the same time i put out mine you put out second album around the same time i put out mine we both got two records and now we're both in this maybe we should work. do the third one together well let's do something together <laughs> definitely <laughs> I would. I'd love that. Actually, let's do. We we talked about this last year, but we should yes. do something. We should do. Let's try a track and, and see where it goes. You know. Well, totally. Why not? I love that. Yeah. Totally. That's... Yeah. No. Well, I I think like totally. the mindset is totally like I should write a third solo album, but I am still. Okay. Let's let's be honest and dark here for a little second before we close this. Yeah. I've been through a fucking shit year. <laughs> okay. And I just feel like whatever happened last year in May, I'm still digesting and processing and it's not I'm not there yet to let creativity and inspiration 
flowed through me. That's okay. where I honestly think I am right now. And uh, I'm working on it. So I hope it's getting better. So Well, I know you've been through a lot. And, um, you know, the things, I mean, there's an interesting, I was thinking about this actually, you know, and I, I didn't know if we were going to talk about it at all or, or, or not. But the only thing I can take away is like, th th this is something that for young players out there too. And I've, I've seen a lot of younger players. Um, uh, it's not a trap, but, you know, we can, we can get so into a, a project or things that we're doing and stuff. And then everything has its course and kind of, you know, reaches an end, right? And that's like part of life, right? Nothing lasts forever and stuff. And totally. just the only thing that I was thinking about is like, cause you do so much other stuff, you know, and you, you're, 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 you're in this project and that project, and then you're great solo records. And the sound of your solo records is actually kind of what I bonded to the most. Like when I was listening yesterday, because you've got this great humor and personality and it was like, I just loved it, you know, and having all your, no, honestly, like that's your, <laughs> that's what I took away from it. And so it, and so all I wanted to say about all of that is that, all of us, we are not our gigs. We are not our, you know, you got into a gig or into a situation or a band. Um, it's, it's, it's important with any relationship, like relationship situation. We can all get so sucked in and get so insular into it and stuff. And then when your life gets disrupted, you know, and you're, that's, that's now yep. you're still you, you know, and it's like, what, you're not your gig or your totally. relationship or what you're you, you know, and yes. it's like, that's, it's so important to remember that everything that got you to that, you know, I couldn't, thing. I couldn't agree more with you right now. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Do yes. you feel like, yeah. And you're just, you're Absolutely. just, you're just reclaiming that. Right. Honestly, like, I, I felt like right after, like with this out of a sudden deafening silence in June last year, it was, I was like floating in oblivion. I'm like, where the yeah. hell am I? Like I lost myself. Where, yeah. where am I? And I'm I'm still on this path trying to figure out, and I I'm on a good path. I'm on a good way, but it takes time to digest. It's a, and I feel like I I would be I would be a shit show if I would be moving on the next month and be like, hey, now I'm the guitar player off and uh, let's go. Yeah, I can't do that because it meant too much to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it it there was too much experience, too many. Tours, shows, people, yeah, everything, and I can't just like move on as if that didn't mean anything to me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You need time to process. You need time to digest, and you need time to definitely find yourself in your core, your music. Like be able to listen to your own music again, like inside of you, mm. and that takes time, I think. And I'm still waking up every morning. I'm like, is today the day? No, <laughs> we'll see. That's okay. Is it, you probably have days where you feel like, ah, like, and then you're like, this is great. I'm on a new, and then like the next day you're like, uh, again, you're like, no. Right. I mean, not really, it, to be honest. Do, okay. No, I, I, I feel like I've been through a year where I have, I feel like I have a giant disconnect with the topic music itself, to be honest. Okay. Okay. And I, yeah. I am fighting my way back to get back to this passion and love that always helped me my entire life uh, and now it, it's just like there's a disconnect uh, and i don't really know why but you know it's time heals all the wounds and i guess I'm, I'm on a good way i'm gonna i'm gonna be better so yeah it just sounds like a uh a you know like a painful a painful breakup situation where you've lost i mean i totally identify with the losing yourself in a situation and then you feel right. a little drift uh, adrift like and you don't know how to get yep. back but it always happens you know time uh, it, it'll it'll you know it always seems to uh it's it's an interesting thing it's like i i with um many of the bands i've played with i mean the cornell gig for me was the number one because i could right. see the writing on the wall when that was you know we did about three three and a half years of great stuff together and then um i knew I could just tell, you know, I could tell like this is probably going to be the last year, maybe the last tour. You never think last show, the, you know, and it's like it. that's what it, all of a sudden, you know, we weren't really doing it anymore. And then I got a couple yeah. chances to work with Chris and play with them again later. Um, and the last one, you know, was uh, 2016. Uh, yeah. I did this, this private gig with him. Um, first time 
back with him in years and we did a show together and I just, God, man, I just feel so fortunate to have gotten to do that one yeah. gig with him again. But, and then of course, next year he was gone, you know, and it's just like, uh, you can't, you know, that I, when we did that one gig in 2016, I was just so thankful. I thought I'm better at this now than I used to be. And we got to do this again, you know? And right. he was so afterwards, he was like, this was so much fun tonight and we'll find a way to do stuff together, you know, again, never happened, but it's like, that's the the finality in some of these things where it's just it's not going to happen again and then you got to find your way and find your next so for a long time people, people would ask me who do you want to play with again like who would you what's your dream gig and i would say chris cornell you know i want to play with with chris again and uh and it's just like that's not gonna happen you know and i have to yeah. i still process that you know daily and and deal with it but you know, i find other ways you know i guess the sideman thing beats you up and makes you fairly resilient in this regard because every gig seems to run its course and stuff and it's just like I've, I've really had to get uh into the zone of like you are not your gig no matter what happens you can yeah. play one show you could play 10 <clears throat> shows you could play 20 years of shows but it's always going to come to a, a conclusion and then you're going to have to move on and find that way totally and, it's, it, and just honor the process and you know so i hope you're and it's good I, it's, I it's good for what it is and it, it definitely teaches you a lot you know it yeah. also i think it teach it it teached me a lot like it taught me a lot like how to adjust my playing to written music that somebody else wrote and i have to like do that it, it's it's different it teaches you a certain kind of skill but at the same sure. time you kind of like lose yourself like you're yeah. i'm i'm for example i'm not a fan of I, I'm a big let's start with the big fan I'm a big fan of everything 5, 7, 9, 11, 13 okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of 4-4 four, four. so mm -hmm. the music that I listen to private here in my car when I'm driving is like a mixture of death metal and Lady Gaga and most of the stuff is like not 4-4 four, four. and mm. so that's me and my quirky music. So if you listen to Insanity, you will find exactly one track that's four four. Wow, that's interesting. But the cool yeah. thing is, but the cool thing is, you don't realize that you're listening to all that freaky stuff. It's like listening to Toto or Aerosmith. You don't realize what you're listening to. That's it's the, like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tricky shit. <laughs> yeah, but it feels when like you, Abba. <laughs> that's so great when you can deconstruct it or make it put it all together <laughs> right. uh, with a melody and stuff that makes yeah. it all feel seamless. Yeah, that's the magic, right? But it's that's, that's very cool. It's very that's cool. exactly purposeful. Porpoise asks here a question about Kevin Gilbert. Um, that I'll just answer. Yeah, I did play with him a little bit actually, never his music, but Kevin Gilbert was this genius guy that passed away when he was 27, you know, like all this the 27 club, I guess. Um, he lived in Pasadena and uh had an amazing studio out there with a neve console and an analog i mean just imagine a guy in his like you know mid-20s with full-on production chops with a full-blown amazing recording studio he could play drums keys guitar bass sing engineer produce the whole nine yards he was this brilliant cat that i met when i was about 23 or 24 years old and he had this profound kind of impact on me because of his level of that was the thing about moving to la was meeting these people that were like uh just operating on some other level um and um, anyway, Kevin used to come and I, I had a songwriting duo uh, with with this woman, Jen Gross. We used to write songs together. And Kevin was that's how her I name met. was Jen and, Gross. Yeah, Jen Gross. Yeah, that's a terrible yeah. name. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell I'm you. Sorry. No, I don't. I haven't talked to her in 25 years. But anyway, Kevin would come over because his studio didn't have a shower and he was living in it for a while. He would come over down the street to Jen's place when we were there working and uh and and use the bathroom and stuff and he'd be like what are you guys working on and and he would sit down and literally sit at the drums when he'd listen to what i was playing and uh, before i knew it there was a completed song with a bass part drums and he was like he was a he was a great producer he used to score t television shows and do all kinds he was just a genius guy i learned so much from so anyway he used to come out and actually play drums with the band i had with jen so um and and he was like, this is great. Like, all I got to do in this band is play drums. Like, because he just felt no pressure to be. He was this legendary dude. But I, I I spent some good time with him. And yeah, I jammed with him a little bit, you know, doing doing stuff. He was a genius. But unfortunately, one of the, one of the first, you know, where reality smacks you in the face at a young age, he died. And uh, that was like a, it was like, oh, my God, you know, when he passed away, it was a crazy, crazy thing. Uh, genius dude. So. 
Sorry, I'm chatting in our own chat right now. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. We should wind it up because it's like yes, we've been it's, going for it's over but... so long. Yeah, two hours and eight minutes. But this has been so brilliant. We've got to do this again. We'll work on a track. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll do something. And then we'll come back and do this again and talk about our experiences totally. and how we pissed each other off. And Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You, know, you suck when you, you know, and we'll have a whole. It'll be great. <laughs> I would love that. I would love that. That's amazing. Okay. Hang out for a second. I'll end here. But thank you guys so much. You know, I love you all out there. And I'll see you next Sunday. Some more uh, cool stuff coming up for Sunday Live. I'm just waiting on confirmation for a, a, a special guest that it'll be an interesting chat if I can put it all together. So uh, more on that soon. But I'll be here same time, same place next week. Sunday morning is 11.45 a.m. Thank you so much, Jen. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. All right.